Okay. What's what's up, guys? Hey, everyone. Welcome. Am I on mute? Can you guys hear me? <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, do you hear this? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I want to make sure it's going through those. We're not doing that again. Yeah. That was so funny. Everyone's like, tap this one, tap that one. <laughs> Everyone was so um, like uh so um cooperative. I know, and I was ex- the, in comments there was not one person what well, was there? I don't think there was anybody that complained about it, which I was expecting, you know, like this is a mess. Yeah. I don't think anybody did. So yeah, you guys were awesome. How's everybody doing? We're waiting. The guest is running a little late, but she'll be here. So we figured we just hop on because we were here ready. So figured we'll come and chat with you guys while we're waiting. Um, and if you guys, you know, this would be a good time. To, oh, I'm screaming. <laughs> this would be a good time if um, you guys have questions, put them in the comments because then I'll star them. So I'll have them for later. Um, if you have any questions you want to ask her, I'm not sure like how. I mean, I have a lot of questions because I don't know how in depth like her relationship was with Tisha. I'm not sure like how how much she uh, had contact with her. All I know is that she's a former uh high school classmate. She said that she has mutual friends. They had mutual friends. Yeah. And that something about they well, definitely let her knew each you. other. Yeah. She yeah basically it sounds like she knew her. Mm-hmm. She definitely knew her, but you know, not after high school. Yeah. So this will be like a peek into what she was like in that, that specific time period. What do you guys think? Like, I'm trying to think. I don't, I feel like it's probably going to be what we're thinking, maybe, like, of who she. Well, no, because I don't think if anybody, like, knew her, they probably never would have guessed she did what she, you know, she did. I mean, that's just, right. But she was probably still a little, like, a little, yeah. And wonder if she was, like, a big liar. Like, was she a pathological liar back then? Because I feel like you're always kind of one like i feel like by high school she probably would have already started lying a lot right i would think um, so yeah so i want to know like when did the lying start was it that that far back which i i would expect it to be to be honest um hey connie sea monkey she probably so, came out of the womb lying yeah probably <laughs> People, I just, and I know a couple people like that too, where it's like, why? Like, like it makes no sense. Like at least to make it be, there be a purpose, you know? Like, right, exactly. No like if the lie, yeah, I've heard people lie where the lie doesn't even benefit them and they do it in a way where I would know that they're lying. So they're getting literally only the negative, like yeah, feedback okay. or the negative reactions to everything. They're not benefiting from it and they're saying they're not lying well enough. So I... I can tell that they're lying. I'm like, why would you do that then? <laughs> you know what I mean? If you're back yeah. into a corner or something and you're not a good liar, you might lie. And then, you know, the other person could tell you're lying. But at least there was a reason for you to have done it. So to have both of those, it just blows my mind. You can't even make sense out of it. Hi, Ohio Italian lady. Hey, how have you been? Nice to see you manipulative yeah so i feel like she li- obviously she lies for reasons but also lies for no reasons like she's pathological so she's probably gonna lie for like to get her out of stuff but then she'll also lie where it's like no point like that's the weird part yeah yeah that's the part i don't get and like for her to make up all those lies like all the different stories to al and then when the fbi agent asked her oh i just i did that on purpose like what was the point of like changing your story i know some of it was to fit the evidence she would learn they have you know like this video or a new piece that she didn't know they had so she'd have to like kind of fit her story to for the evidence right yeah but i feel like some of that she didn't like some of it was just like she just changed the story for no reason like the pregnant lady with the freaking money in her stomach like <laughs> like did you really like what wait can you tell like, me what that is what that yeah about? so she says this is one of the stories she tells out she says she's driving she sees this, she's with uh, Gannon. She sees this pregnant lady. She's like, she looked about eight months pregnant. She looked really pregnant. So I pick her up and here, she's not pregnant. It was like money all stuffed on, you know, under her shirt or whatever. So it was like stuffed with money. And she basically, so she asked me to go into different stores to drop off like, what was it? Slips and pick up packages and stuff. But the thing is, is she never got to the end because something happened. Did she ever get to the end of that story? I feel like something when I was watching it in the trial, either they stopped it there or Al, the, the subject changed or something. Let me know, though, because I don't know what happened after that. I think that oh, was interesting. kind of the so end. Mary Lee in chat says that she read the paper and there was a bust of 
a money launderer and it was a lady using a fake belly. So I bet that's right. I bet you just read it in the paper and then just made it about her. Yeah. That she was driving the lady around. Because Quincy Brown was a real FBI, wanted by FBI. And um, yeah, so she probably takes like a real... So wait, the person that the pregnant lady was she having people go in and get like slips and like exchange them for packages? And I like... mean, if if you read that someone was a money launderer, oh, you... that that would pop up in your mind, no? Yeah, yeah. I think she just you know came up with that on her own. Oh my god! And then I think it. I think that when it got to the point where she knew they had too much, she was already arrested. There's nothing she could do. That's when she started going with the DID, the dissociative identity disorder. That's when I think that's when she went with that. Because mm -hmm. what else are you going to do? You have all the free, like you have all the they have all the evidence. You can't get out of it. So then, huh? What's her other option now? So right. Plead and see. It's like it but... started with her saying it. Basically, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. And then the next step. Once that, once you can't do that anymore, then the next thing you could do for it wasn't me was to have dissociative identity disorder. Yep. Rosemary, are you all right? Back, been hospitalized for a few months. Missed you also. Oh, what if? What were you hospitalized uh, for? It's good to have you back. Yay! I'm glad you're back. Mm, yeah, for a few months, man, that must have been pretty serious. Halo effect. What is up? Oh, Teresa! Hey! What's up, girl? I'm so sorry about your dad. I hope you don't mind me. So her dad died. Oh, I'm sorry. How are you doing? Hopefully that that, that was okay that I said that. I don't want to, like, blab your, your um info, but... Um, no, I'm sure it's fine, I would think. How are you? Thanks for stopping out. Man, I, yeah, it's hard losing a parent. But I was looking at those pictures you posted. You look, he looks, or you look just like him. It's so crazy. Oh, I love when that it's happens. Cute. I know. Little that tongue. one picture, especially, I have to show you which one I mean. It's like, as soon as I looked at it, I was like, oh my God, that's crazy. Like she looks <laughs> just like him. That's like you and your cousin. Zav has a cousin that looks like a lot like her. I don't really look a lot like any of my cousins. Yes, the cousin you showed that me I don't the other look day. A lot like her. I think. Well, there's some things that I I'd be able it's, to tell you're related. Yeah, it's not like surprising we're related, but it's we don't look like you and uh, your cousin look like. Um, oh no, your nephew. Wait, nephew? Are you talking about? You, you, that's why you said cousin, but then I thought you're yeah, talking no, about him probably, yeah, right? Your nephew. Yeah, it looks like it looks like the two of you are siblings. But that's who you were talking about just a minute ago, right? Yeah, yeah. I just said cousin by accident. I, but see, I don't, I mean, I could, people have said that and I could kind of see it, but I don't see it as much as what you, but I, always the person doesn't see it as much, I feel like. For you yeah, and then also as you get to know people like better, them. sometimes you don't feel like they look as much alike. Yeah, so. Like you if you, had, you know any like identical twins and you first meet them, you're like, oh shit, how am I going to do this? And then as you get to know and them then, more, you're like, they don't look exactly alike. Yeah, because they're not the same person, so you pick up exactly. little things. Yeah. yeah. And then I'll see. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, hey, um, Island Girl, what's up? Do you need to check hey. your email in case she's having difficulty? Uh, uh, hold on. Good. What would I do without you? See, I'm, sometimes <laughs> I don't think at all this stuff. Yeah, hold on. Let me check. Mr. Oh. Upper Torso says, I don't trust identical twins. I watched Dead Ringers. I had never seen that, but I mean, there is something that's like in a comical sense, like, where like I feel like I wouldn't trust them. Oh. <laughs> Only because I know that, like all the shit that I would be pulling if I was an identical twin. I'd be just messing with everyone constantly. I mean, you could. You could like do so much. Oh, there's just so for many the things fun you of it. Do. Just to be, yeah, just to be like, let's just try. And hopefully people would have like a good sense of humor. There's People so there, right? much you could do. It's like I'm I'm kind of pissed off that I'm not an identical twin. Yeah, but then I'm trying to think of some of the downfalls to it. Would there be any? No downfalls I mean... to having two of me in this world. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Um... If I say something like that, then you say it's true, then it makes me sound like I'm being full of myself. No, 
Oh, I meant Jokey Ride, just for the record. Oh, I see. Because if um, I say it's true, yeah. <laughs> um, you guys, any you guys, new people coming in. We're waiting for the guest, so that she is coming. She just ran a little late, so any new people coming in, if you're like, wait, I thought there's supposed to be a guest. Yeah, she's she'll be here. Yeah, um, I'm not the guest. How do you act, <laughs> Julia? Well, you're a a permanent guest. I'm a special um, guest. My special guest. Oh, smile, love. I love your name, smile, love. You need to get a good like profile picture. Not that that's not good, but like get a like a custom one. But what is this? How do you activate the on your gifts? channel? What is that? I don't know what that means. The gifts? Is that super chats or is that what it looks like on your side? I forget. I don't know. Can somebody help smile, love out? I don't know what that. Yeah, I don't either. You don't. Let me see. Does that show up like that? Let me go into my uh, chat with my phone and see, like, when you click the options, if that's like this. Is that what the super chat looks like, or is that what what? I'm not sure. Hold on. Let's see if I go into live. Hold on. I don't see it on my end. I see the uh, super chat thing. Yeah, I see the money with the super chat, but I don't see if that's what you're talking about. Maybe if they have an Android, it might show up different, you know, than because I have an iPhone. I don't know. Um, smile, love. Hey, Hi, Peyton. Hi, Mez. Sorry. <laughs> hey, Peyton. Hey, Ossane. Teal blue. It's meow or never. <laughs> That's a good one. It's meow or never. I like that. <laughs> Wait, what was that actually really good one that we were all laughing at the other night? Like I was even saying, like you're because you're so easily entertained by names, but there this it was, one was. It was like fat tube, fat baby fat something. Tubal fat tube. It's like tubal or wait, two. Ooh, I don't know. So chat. We were here the other night with Fat Baby, something that we were all cracking up at. It was just oh, so good. Criminality, you was criminality just gifted five memberships. Wow, oh, thank, thank you. you. We got Lauren, the people that got it is Lauren Cove, Connie S. Or wait, no, I'm looking at the wrong. Yeah, no, I'm looking at the right thing. Okay, no, Lauren me. Cove, Connie S, Cindy Ann, who? Know me. Know me and Steph sells stuff by the seashore. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> And know me. Oh, congrats and thank you so much, Criminality. Yay. Um, Lotus Flower. All right, yeah. So you started saying that we're waiting on uh, a yeah. guest who is a young lady who knew Letitia back in high school. Let me see my email. Was in here the other night talking to us about you know a little, couple of things. Yeah, no, no emails yet. So I was saying, what was that person's name the other night? Fat baby. Toodle, toodle, fat baby toodles. Fat baby toodles. I think it was something <laughs> like that. <laughs> I don't know why I liked it so much. Okay, cool. Oh, were you talking about membership? But yeah, no problem. Um, oh, no rush. Surgery? What? Oh, major surgery. Wow. Are you Hi, okay? Hi, beautiful mess. Mess. Are you okay? Uh, like, what kind of major surgery? Wow. Oh. Excited about this. Pleasure. Yeah, I know. What? How long have we been on? 15 minutes. She did contact us and she said she's running late. So, yeah, um, we just thought we would start. start. She's gonna like, we'll just start. Like, so <laughs> no, I don't think she will. She has kid, you know, kids and stuff. She said she yeah. has to wait till they go to bed, but that's why she had to be later. But, um, no rush. Tammy Aww, says fat baby toodles. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, thanks, Teresa. Ashley, what's up? Hey, Ashley. How have you been? Why Georgia? Oh, thanks, Mez. Fat face baby. No, it definitely wasn't fat face baby. <laughs> it was toodle. It had toodle. It had like a funny little fat cute baby word toodle. In it. Yeah, fat. I baby think toodle. that's it. Just fat baby toodle. I think toodle. it is. I think it is. 
Oh, thanks. Yeah, I. it's kind of new. Do you like it? The color of my cell case. I love it. It's cool. It's so like, and it feels it's very awesome. you. Smooth. <laughs> yeah, it is. Huh? I almost like it. Looks like it'd be good to eat, <laughs> like candy. It like, does. That yeah. Flavor like look it, it looks like it would be sour. No, it looks like it'd be cotton candy. Almost. Oh like, no, that it's flavor. sour to me. Taste it. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you it's sour <laughs> and tastes like. No, you're not gonna do it. Sour I patch kids. <laughs> I love sour stuff though. So maybe a mm -hmm. sour cotton candy. <laughs> Ooh, that would be good, would it? Wait, let me picture it. Maybe. I yeah, love yeah, cotton I candy flavored, so and I like sour, so I think it would. So if anybody does anybody have um questions, you could put them in now and then I'll star them. So let me see if anybody's I am, but I'm not. Like, I don't think there's any way that she is going to win. I really don't. So, no. I feel pretty confident that it's a pretty... I don't know, though. I mean, maybe I guess you never like, know. Maybe but... they, they just have a really good jury who is like, look, there's no rush for this. Let's yeah, why is people... That's what I would do. No, yeah. Why like is this. people saying it? Why a couple, saying I've heard it? a couple people say that they're they were concerned that they didn't come back with something right away. No, I am glad if they would have came back the same day, I kind of would have been, I was so mad. At I don't Mark think anyone Alex. should come back the same day. No, like this is a murder case, like discuss everything. Yeah. Even though it doesn't mean they're going to say not guilty or insane, but like, don't you think like when they did what Murdoch did, it went two or three hours. I definitely like, I was disappointed in that story. Like they should have freaking discussed it. Like, go over everything. So, no, I'm glad they're taking their time and looking. You know, if I was in the jury, I would want to go over everything just in case because this is a murder trial. This is a big thing. This is somebody's life. I would at least do my job and go over everything. But that's just me. Yeah. Um, I'm glad that they me did. Me too. Especially but to see the, the Murdoch yeah. one, especially because remember, there were so many people, was... myself included, who were like, I completely believe he did it, but I don't know if I believe beyond yeah. reasonable doubt. Like so many people were like, ooh, but if I was on the jury, what would I do? So it wasn't like, it wasn't completely clean cut, you know? And then that one, they came back that fast. And so I, I that was, I made me so like, mad. Oh, I wanted it to, I wanted him to be guilty, but I wish they would have like taken a little longer because I think yeah. he definitely was behind it. But I don't, I'm not convinced he actually was the one behind the trigger. I think he definitely was behind the murder. Or but it could have been, still could have been him and someone else. And or, it's just, yeah, or if he had help. So it's like, but do, do, we, do we ever figure out, I don't know if it, anybody ever came to like a, a an answer of if the jury had doubts, let's say they all came to the conclusion that they think that he had help, would they still say guilty? Would they, I mean, were they still supposed to say guilty or no? Oh, that's a good question. I was asking that the whole time. I'm like, you guys, does anybody know? Because I was so confused because I'm like, like, what are they supposed to say? Is it still? Because if they'd still believe he did it, but then it's just kind of You're right. Yeah, because... if the prosecution the entire time was just uh, putting it forward that he was by himself throughout the entire case. And then they, yeah, at the end, they believed yeah. he was one of two people. What would they say? I don't know. I don't know legally. Are they still still supposed to say guilty if they if they thought that? I would. I, I mean, I think they should, but I wonder. Yeah, does anyone know if that's like if something else happens then? Because then also it would, they, I, you could say like, oh, they caught that guy already. He got a guilty verdict. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't know. I was I was asking that the whole time. I kept saying, "Does anybody know?" And I never got an answer. So I didn't like if anybody like legally it was watching could give me like an answer, but no, I would never did. I don't. I know it's weird. I mean, it's something I would like if I was a part of the jury. I would ask the judge that. Like maybe they did. Yeah, yeah. They probably sure they went over that possibility because it was such a. Uh... A likelihood that you know because there were a lot of people that thought he was you know one of two people him and uh cousin eddie was yeah. a big thing what does it say the other personalities are going to just have to serve time with her because they didn't stop her stuff i know those yeah. those, those poor uh other personalities are getting getting locked up huh my chair, Peyton? What do you mean, my chair? 
Are you just now seeing it, or what about it? Is there something? <laughs> Does it look funny? Wait, okay, so you people used to say it looks like oh, Darth Vader, but then I just got a new one last week. What was it? I think it was in the comments that it said it looked like something else, and I was like, oh, yeah, it kind of does, but I can't remember what it was. Now. Oh, yeah, I remember that. I don't remember what it was either, some character yeah. or something. She looked like the ring. She did. Like, not even joking, she looked like the ring. Like the lady, and the girl in the ring. Yeah. You know what you think? When I heard people saying that, I thought it was going to be like, kind of look a little like her and whatever. But then when I saw it, I was like, oh my God. Not even kind of. <laughs> it's crazy. But anyway, to get back to Letitia, I do think, and I want her, obviously, to, I mean, I think she's lying. I don't think she has DID. I think that she's full of it. So I, I definitely want, want her to get charged and, and have a, a guilty uh, verdict. But like I said, I'm not mad that they're taking their time. Yeah. Um, so, but watch, like, like watch it surprise us. Wouldn't that be crazy if they come back and. <sighs> I can't imagine with this one. The Casey Anthony. Is that what happened? What do you mean? Like, did everyone think like for sure they're going to say, guilty and then or what i mean everybody thought for sure she did it yeah yeah so that then so then yeah i guess they would think the jury it yeah dude and i think she's definitely did it and they no she got not guilty that's why um uh what's her name leticia kept saying that she basically had the same job uh, what's his name jose baez or whatever was casey anthony's lawyer she kept saying that she has him. That's who the lawyer. And he's like posting, no, we, I'm not representing her. Actually, Court TV or Long Crime did an interview with him where to once again say, no, I wasn't right. representing her. I never talked to her at all. But she kept saying that he wanted to take her case. And he called her it's like, oh, my <laughs> God. Yeah, right. Okay, yeah. But couldn't they, with the death penalty, though, can't you just, isn't there an option where you, it could be guilty without the death penalty? Isn't that an option where they don't always have to go with that? I thought that was like a separate thing. I could be wrong, but I thought there you could still say guilty, but not guilty for the... Like she doesn't fit the qualifications for the death penalty, as far as in their opinion, they, they don't feel that. But maybe I'm wrong. Huh. That's interesting. I didn't know that. They probably decide ahead of time. Hmm. You know, like going into it, the jurors know that, you know, it's either guilty or not guilty or whatever, or they'll know if it's there's guilty and not death penalty. I don't know what to do. Like, should I, should we just chat with you, with you guys some more? Or should I get into like, maybe l looking through some stuff about the case? I don't know. I'm just trying to like, waste you time email here. You again? No. I'm just trying to kind of waste time. That's why I'm not going over anything. Cause I don't want to get started. And then she comes. She, sh I mean, I didn't know how late she was going to be. I don't know. We'll see, I guess. I'll just keep chatting with you guys. I just hope you guys aren't disappointed that we're just sitting here um yeah just to uh, reiterate for those who came in um we did hear from her right before we went live <laughs> and she's like so sorry running a little late so uh, i don't think she it's not an issue of her flaking or yeah and no i know leticia's isn't that we were talking about casey anthony that's why um they're, they're saying that's why the uh, the jury came out and said that that's why they didn't. They voted not guilty. Yeah, I know Letitia. That wasn't even on the table for her. Um, oh, wow. A lot of people were thinking I was saying Letitia. <laughs> oh, jeez. No. Oh, thanks, Jordan. Thank you. It is guilty of murder if you have someone do it. It's called. Oh, no, I know, Kelly. Like, as far as are you talking about Alex Murdoch, I know. Yeah, but I'm saying since the the narrative and the state set it up as him pulling the trigger, 
would there have to be like another trial? You know what I'm saying? Or, or sh is it okay that the jury, let's say the jury doesn't think he did it, but was behind it. I don't know what the rules are for that, but yeah, no, I know he could still get uh, charged, but I just didn't know legally how they would have to do that with the jury. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, I don't I think, know either. I think yeah. that's a lot of that stuff depends on the state too, which is why it's confusing. You're right. Thanks, right, Kiki Cho. Details. Thanks, Maria. Our, welcome, Maria. And thank you, Kiki Cello. Wow, we got a lot of people in chat. Come on, yeah, guest. Come on, guest. No, I'm happy. I hope that didn't <laughs> come across like I was. Thank you guys for all being here. Did you Have you seen any questions yet that we could start? Yeah, have... I started a couple. Or it says one, actually. Yeah, it only shows one, but that's fine. Maybe you I guys on maybe I'm lying. Anybody have any questions for her? So when she comes on, we'll already have kind of a list of them. Let's see. I'll try to look through. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's yeah. At least she'll be put away either way. You're right. So maybe that's another reason I'm not really that nervous because either way they go, she's not getting out. Yeah. Okay, here's one. Did you kick her booty in high school? <laughs> uh, oh, thanks, Anne. I know. No, it was more circumstantial, but we all, no, I shouldn't say we all, most of people thought she did it, even though it was, yeah. I mean, do you think even after the verdict? I I mean, I think they have more with Letitia's. Yeah, I think so too. That they have definitely have more. Thank you for super chat. Um, but yeah, definitely. It was circumstantial. And because they couldn't see with um with Casey Anthony, they couldn't d uh do a cause of death, like because it was so so much time had passed so that was hard because they couldn't even say how she died so that that yeah. i think hurt hurt it too because they you know the jury wants to hear like kind of a story of why you think this person did it how she did it you know what i'm saying so they said like if that that really hurt hurt the case too that they couldn't um do that so i don't know it's tricky yeah. Dirty stuff. Ooh, that's a good one, Lotus Flower. I starred yours. I have like a list too, but is it probably, we're probably going to have a lot of the same ones. Let's see what I... Let's see, let's see. Stuffed banana. Uh, I'm not sure. She was chatting with us in here the other night. Uh, she might just use like her YouTube name. Yeah, she said she's gonna go by her YouTube name. It's um, oh shoot, called triggered true crime. I think. Hold on, I'm hoping she'll just put it in the thing, you know, where you put the name. Uh, hold on, let me see. Where is it? Hmm. Trying to find the name real quick. Where the heck is it? I don't know. I'll have to wait till she comes on and puts it. Something triggered in true crime or something like that. I wonder why it's not coming up. Huh. Oh, yeah, Triggered True Crime is her YouTube. Or I don't know if she has videos or not, but we'll have to ask her. Triggered True Crime. All right, let's see if there's any more questions. She won't be put away with life in a mental institute when she stops acting. Yeah, that's true, Lindsay. Oh, Ronnie, just Ronnie. Welcome. Yay. Howdy, howdy. Oh, there we go. She's here. Okay. Woohoo. Yay. 
All right, trigger true crime. You could probably hear me. Is it okay if I add you? All right, hold on one second. Let me. Okay. Oh, same. <laughs> All right, I'm going to add you. Hey, hello. Hello, everybody. I'm sorry I'm late. Hey, okay. no problem. Glad you made it. How are you? I'm, I'm doing good. I'm just going to pour me some some ginger ale while we talk. But Go like I said, it. I apologize, apologize for being late. I'm glad I could make it. I'm glad yeah. you guys waited. Thank you. Yeah, for thank us. you for coming. Um, thank you for having me. Verdict <laughs> watch. <laughs> oh, do you have um, your own channel? I do. I've had it. Um, I've had my channel since the Kanika Jenkins case. Oh man, I got um, into most that. Most of <laughs> most of my videos are private, so mm -hmm. um, you know, when that case started, I actually had a newborn, so I really didn't have a lot of time to dedicate to it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've had my channel since then. There's not any new content. I'm a busy mom, so. Yeah. But yeah, um, at some point in the near future. I plan on doing some kind of video of my own about this case. So mm -hmm. um, any videos like that would appear on my channel. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, for those yeah. of you interested, go uh, subscribe to her channel so that when she does that, you'll get a notification. Thank you. Yeah, you're yeah. welcome. Kanisha Jenkins was, was crazy. Uh, I'm not, yeah. I always say on here, I'm not a real true crime person, but every now and then there's certain cases that just like, grab me you know that was one of them because i was like i could not for the life of me figure out what the heck happened there i didn't follow that one huh i don't know anything about it what how what year was that when was that 2017 2017 That's wow that long ago that feels so recent to me it, it feels <laughs> recent to me too i can't believe i have a child that <laughs> old already i'm glad you wow. answered before i did i would have been like ah oh, two years ago and it was kind of um, funny. Actually, I started a Facebook group about the Kanika Jenkins case, and it mm -hmm. was it was entitled um, Case Discussion, because mm -hmm. most of the time when you gather to talk about true crime, it truly is a discussion. You know? Yeah. So next thing I know, Kate 420 had my group and all my information from the group up in her channel on her videos. And I was like, oh, wow, I need to go to YouTube so I can see what's going on. Yeah. So um, I've pretty much had a channel ever since then. But I love Kate 420. She's a great um, researcher okay. and true crime kind of channel, too. Okay, awesome. cool. No. But, but that's what brought me over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I'm over. Well, glad you're Thank here. You. Thank you. And um, obviously this case, um, my channel has probably had 100 names up. Pretty much I'm going to stick with this one, I think, because it's very fitting. Um, but knowing people personally that are impacted in these cases is very triggering. <laughs> so yeah, this one, this one, indeed, as a few others, um, was definitely like, wow. Thanks, Anne. May again and visit Letitia every night and give her the hallucination she's been wanting. <laughs> oh, thanks, Anne. <laughs> So who do you, do you only know Leticia or do you know like her family too? Do you know her sister? I, or? I do know. I have, I casually know her sister. Um, she's a whole lot younger than us. Um, mm -hmm. So for instance, the people that I know that know her siblings did not even know that she had an older sister. Um, whereas I know the older sister and didn't really know she had younger siblings. So yeah. Um, that's, there's a big age difference between her and her siblings. Um, so I do know her. I've never spoken to her brother that was, that testified, but I have spoken and do know her younger sister, Cash. Okay. So that's the only family of hers I know. And so you, you knew her in high school, right? Is that the right time period we're talking about, high school years? That is correct. Um, okay. When I started, um, like all... If you'll give me one second, I should have put my phone mm -hmm. on Do Not Disturb. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love the Do Not Disturb. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah I do. I love on. it. Just don't. So, like are, you, are you in the same grade as her? Is it the same and, grade? 
Yeah, that's what I actually was going to lead into. Um, okay. So when I started, when I started high school as a freshman, ninth grade year, um, obviously, like most new incoming freshmen, it's a bigger school, it's a new experience, it's intimidating, all that stuff. Um, mm-hmm. And for the first time, most of my classes were grade level. For instance, I was in my other classes with other freshmen, but there were also several other classes that I had that included upperclassmen, and most of them would have been electives, whether it was gym or band or some kind of elective, you would have Mm -hmm. all four grade levels in one class. So when I started, so when I started ninth grade, um, I had chorus, and so I would have been 14, and she would have been 15 turning 16, somewhere around there. Um, So I was in the ninth grade, and she was in the 11th when I met her. Gotcha. So I was I was in course with her ninth and tenth grade, and then she graduated. Well, you were in chorus with her. I was in wow. course. I was and I was in course, and so that is is how I met her. Um, and needless to say, my very first encounter with her, first as a, as a freshman, you know, that first couple weeks of school, you're like looking for your classes and looking at your schedule. You're kind of lost, you know, as a freshman. So I found my course class and I went in and um, what she didn't know is I had had a very traumatic summer leading up to freshman year. And um, Mm -hmm. so obviously I didn't take that with me to school. Nobody would have known that. But I had I I had some things happen that summer. So when I started school, I kind of had a game plan on how I was going to have a productive year because I already knew I was starting off on the wrong foot, so to speak. Right. So I went to class that time, that year, I went to class that day, I actually toted my Bible, and it was in a Bible case with a handle. So I come in with my book sack and my Bible. <laughs> um, and so she pointed that out. She was like, you brought your Bible to class? I was like, yeah, I bring my Bible to school. I need it. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so that was like kind of her opening conversation with me, and um, and then by the time of the end of the class period, she said, well, have you heard about Freshman Friday? And I said, yeah, I heard something about it. And she said, well, you know, they put freshmen in the trash cans on on the on Friday of the first week of school. Mm-hmm. And everybody was kind of looking at the freshmen in the class. There was maybe me and maybe five other freshmen in the course class. And they all looked at us. And since she's the one that said that, asking me, was I ready for Freshman Friday? I said, well, mm-hmm. I'm not really worried about it because if, if anybody's going to be put me in the trash can, it won't be you because you're not big enough. <laughs> and so and so the whole class laughed. So where she was trying to embarrass or intimidate me, I kind of flipped it around on her. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I, and I use humor in that way. Um, yeah. So she kind of was like blushing because everybody was laughing like, hush, because I'm a I am a very solid person. Uh, I guess you would call it BBW, but even in school, I was very <laughs> thick and, and above average than most of my classmates. So right. there's no way that her little She's not self, getting you she could have not. <laughs> yeah, she could not have picked me up. So it was just like, why even bring it up? <laughs> so that was literally. So obviously, that's the first week of course with her. So I already knew, OK, she's asking me about basically pushing, pressing me about my religious beliefs. Um, Mm -hmm. and she's trying to intimidate me. That's not really a good start for the first week of class. (laughs) Right. Um, and so from then on, it just kind of, you know, accumulated. We, we started off on that foot and we pretty much stayed on that foot the whole two years that I knew her. Mm -hmm. Um, did you feel like, uh, I feel like you'd understand this just because you you mentioned how you kind of hit back with humor in a certain way, which I do also. But do you feel like she was the type of person who was just used to people being afraid of her? And then when you weren't, she then part of her was kind of out to get you a little. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Because um, because you weren't afraid of her. No, I wasn't. And, And because I was younger, she assumed I would be. Right. And um, she, she didn't, didn't like that you she, Yeah, she wouldn't have, you know, I noticed she wouldn't have approached her classmates of her age level. And mm-hmm. so um, I just, you know, during this whole case, you remember a lot of things and you don't remember it all at one time. So I've had three years now to 
you know, just remember different things. And one thing that come to my mind, um, one of our classmates that was in course with us was special needs. And mm -hmm. um, pretty much everybody, just to be honest about the experience, no one picked on her. Everyone pretty much ignored the, the student. She, I'm not sure what she what her need, her special need was, but it was some form of Tourette's or autism to mm -hmm. where she would be very quiet and she would burst out either with random words or noises. And she would also do hand movements where like she would hit her head or her chest, repetitive, mm -hmm. repetitive motions. Mm -hmm. And so when she would have these experiences in class, the whole class would ignore it. We would just continue on with class because right. we, knew that, we knew that she was special needs. Mm -hmm. And a tish, Tisha was the only one that just thought it was hilarious when she would have these outbursts. Wow. And, and I saw that right away because the first week of class, you're kind of feeling everybody out. And once she saw, once the class, once we saw that this student had, had some special needs, she would, her eyes would just light up and she would watch her and she would study her. And then as time progressed, you know, she would even do things you know, to aggravate the girl. Cause anytime the student was stressed, those symptoms would show, you know? Mm -hmm. So over the months and the years I was, I was in course with her both years, you know, Tisha could be like, Hey girl, or whatever, and, you know, get her attention and just laugh. And the girl would instantly get stressed and start, you know, having symptoms. God. And so I would be, that was, you know, one of the first things that I would confront her on. I was like, you need to, I won't share exactly all the things I share with her, <laughs> but you need to leave her alone. You know, mm -hmm. everybody else ignores her. Leave her alone. Um, you're mean and hateful, et cetera, and the third. So, and I had almost forgot about the, the special needs student, um, but she was a really sweet girl and mm -hmm. we were all happy to have her in class and she wasn't typically disruptive. Um, but like I said, Tisha would, and she would try to do it silently where nobody saw her or could hear her so she wouldn't get in trouble. But because right. but because I kept a close eye on her, I would catch her, and I'd be like, "I seen you, I seen you. Leave her alone. Just leave yeah. her alone." You know, um, that's bad, bad. Yeah, wow. Yeah, she's not. She's she's not. A, obviously, she's not a good person. Mm -hmm. She's never has been a good person. This is all my opinions and my mm -hmm. experiences. But um, the saddest part about watching the trial was her personality's the same. I, I don't see any growth. I see the same classmate I had, wow. um, you know, and that's sad because we, I'm, I'm 37 now. Mm -hmm. So um, she's two years older than me. So she just turned 39 or about to be 39. And I just see the same, you know, the same mannerisms, the same yeah. joking inappropriately, you know, just all of, of her personality. I don't see any change. I see the same old t-shirt. Wow. She all one thing that she has been honest about is she has always hated her name. And that first week that I met her in course, that was another conversation we had. Um, I won't share my name, but I have a exotic name, a different name. And mm -hmm. so when she uh, heard my name, it's kind of hard for some people to pronounce. So I, I told her the correct pronunciation and she said, do you like your name? I said, yeah, I love your name. And I'm just going to be frank. I haven't heard any other YouTubers really mention it. And I haven't heard it come up in trial about mm -hmm. why she, maybe I think I heard the prosecutor ask why she didn't like her name, but our, none of the other people ever said why, but just frankly, she didn't like her name because she felt it was a cultured name. Mm -hmm. Period. Mm -hmm. Period. And and so my name could be considered that also. So right. she said, so she said, you don't feel like it's it's a cultured name. I said, even if it is, I love it. I love yeah. my, I love my name. You know what I'm saying? And then she said, Well, what's your middle name? And I told her my, my middle name's pretty generic. Um, I will share my middle name because nobody would know me by that, but my middle mm -hmm. name is Nicole. So mm -hmm. Nicole's very generic. And she was like, well, I like Nicole. If I was you, I would go by Nicole. I don't mm -hmm. like my middle. I don't even have a good middle name. And I said, well, I like my whole name. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Sounds but like a, a you issue. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like a you issue. And I, and I encouraged her to do the same. And to be honest, I tried the, the positive approach with her, um, mm -hmm. you know, at first, like I always do. We had one mutual friend 
which was a very good friend of mine, a very sweet girl. And um, she, as the more we were around each other, the more combative it, it become because she's very hard to deal with. And it's at some point your patience runs thin and you're just tired of dealing with it. And so I, I, you know, as I got older and the more time I had to spend around her, I was getting less patience with her. And so our mutual friends started coming to me saying, you know, you need to calm down with her, please cut her a break. And basically the friend, the very few friends she did have and, and the consensus that I got in course was it's very obvious something ain't right with her. So in other words, I'm supposed to treat her as if she's special needs while she's not giving the same courtesy to someone else's special needs in here. Yeah. You know, um, but you could, I mean, it was very obvious there wasn't, I told her, frankly, like I said, it, it progressed the longer we were around each other because she was smart, book smart. She was one of those people that could make the grade, but then you talk to her and you're like, are you okay? Like, mm-hmm. I don't, we don't, it, it was just such a night and day. And so I, I told her, cause I was in AG, I was in the honors classes, but I noticed that she wasn't in my AG class and AG class was all grade levels. So mm-hmm. she, she did not meet the standard to be in AG with us. So, you know, even though she didn't make good grades, she wasn't uh, gifted, but I told her straight up, I said, either you had a birth defect or your mother had drug use when you were mm-hmm. prenatal or you were dropped on your head. There is no other explanation. Yeah. And I told her that as a friend and I told her that as an enemy. I mean, I've told, I told her that both ways, nicely and ugly, you know, because it just depends on the day. Um, and as we were around each other more, she did share her abuse story with me. Um, mm-hmm. Our mutual friend kind of come to me and encouraged me to go talk to her about my own abuse so that she would open up to me about hers. And she did. Um, but my the, the theme of that conversation with her for me was, OK, that's what happened. But this is what I'm doing now to cope with it. Mm. And I come to class every day. I have my Bible and my journal mm-hmm. and I was in chorus and I was in band. And she asked me because I have an a- athletic body type. She always encouraged, why, why don't you play softball with us? Why don't you play sports? You, you can tell you'd be good at sports. And I told her. Because I know myself and I know right now I have an anger issue that is going to come out in any physical sport I play. Mm -hmm. So that's not that's not productive for me right now. I do enjoy playing sports, but emotionally I can't handle it right now. I I've served it served myself better in music and chorus and band because that gives me peace. It's relaxing. I enjoy it. And it's that's calm. impressive that you, you were able to know that at, at that age. Oh no, I had been through so much that yeah. it was, it was imperative. I knew at, I knew by high school that if I don't take my life, my mental health, my, my future seriously, I'm going to crash out and be a statistic. And I just was determined not to be that. See, I had this same discussion with Tisha and I told her, we talked about the cycle of abuse. We talked about generational trauma. And I told her, I said, if you continue, if you don't heal that stuff, if you don't find positive ways to cope with that stuff, then the cycle is going to continue. And the bad thing about that is they win then too. They, they won then and, and we might have not have had control over what happened to us. But mm-hmm. if we if we let it dictate our now and our future, then the devil just continues to win. And mm-hmm. I just re- I just refuse to let him steal my future that way. Yeah. yeah. And and one moment, please. I can't believe she had that uh, self-awareness in high school. Yeah, she's yeah, man, we don't even have to ask many questions because she's just going on like telling this. Yeah. Yeah, I love it telling a good story um i kind of want to know more about the abuse to say, like what what i want to see if it matches up to what she claims now what, if she, what she she told her. yeah yeah um, the but, abuse i'm back yeah, oh yeah <laughs> um, that, what how did what did she say like the specifics the abuse, is it matching what she's saying now the abuse i knew her during the time and you heard share it was shared in the trial that she left home at 16, 15 or 16. And she absolutely did. That is the truth. Um, Mm -hmm. While I knew her in course, she was staying house to house between 
family members and friends. Um, she even stayed with our mutual friend zone. So she was house to house in between houses um, during the time I knew her because of the abuse. And, and while we shared our abuse stories and, and the time, that conversation that we had, um, she shared with me that her mom, you know, that the most hurtful part of it was her mom didn't, you know, protect her or try to um, stand up for her in any kind of way. And basically what I told her is, um, you know, your mom, you don't know what kind of cycle abuse your mom comes from. And she can't mm-hmm. give you what she can't pour into you what she doesn't have. If she doesn't know any other way, then she's not going to be able to. But that's where you. You, since you're intelligent, that's where you got to make the conscious decision to not be that. And it, it, you know, it is sad that that she didn't. But just consider the fact maybe she didn't know how. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah, that's true. Because because my impression was that her mom her mom at that time had a drug issue. Um, that's why you heard come up in the trial. Her mom would be gone for weeks at the time. That was tied into the drug issue. So, you know, I let her know that, you know, between addiction and whatever cycle abuse your mom has had, she probably just literally can or doesn't know how and needs help herself. And I told her it was a good thing that she removed herself from the situation. That was a that was a good choice. But since you've made the conscious choice to leave the home and you're out here, you know, staying from house to house instead of coming to school being a mean ass bitch, why don't you try to figure out how to heal yourself and fix that? Better yourself, yeah. You know, because I had, which, like I said, um, one thing that's, it, the people that know where she's from, they would know this, but one thing that hasn't been a part of the bigger discussion is Tisha really is from a very violent place. Mm-hmm. We are from a very violent place. We have the highest homicide rate in the state and several times we've had um, scored very high in the country for homicide rates. We're mm-hmm. a rural, we're we're a rural area, but our homicide rate is so bad that the federal government gives us urban grant money geared toward reducing homicide rates. That typically wow. those those grants are issued outside of L.A. big city Chicago yeah. Cook County. We get those same funds to try to combat the homicide rate here. So. Wow. The summer before ninth grade, I had witnessed my third or fourth murder. I'd, I have witnessed several murders in my life. Yeah. And it's very likely that Tisha has too. I'm going to just be honest. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know that for sure, but I'm just sharing with you that we're from a very violent place. Yeah. Um, Wait, can I ask you a question now that you're talking about this? So I read a letter in one of my videos, just my one of recent video where she said she witnessed a murder in her high school of a yeah, that, boyfriend killing his girlfriend or something? Do you know anything about that? Yeah, th- I read that in her letter. And I was like, as soon as I read it, my brain was, you got to know, because we're from a violent place that I got probably got 50 p- murders in my brain. So I started going through the Rolodex. Well, first of all, <laughs> no one's ever been murdered at our school. So that part is a lie. Now, the part about she witnessed the murder um, between the boyfriend and the girlfriend, she very likely did, but it did not happen at the school. Mm. I know, I know at least four women that were stabbed and murdered by their boyfriends. So one of those four or another one could likely be someone that she knew too, because I have witnessed um, that happen between a, a domestic violence situation. Also, as a matter of fact, to just give you a quick example of what skill we're talking about here. The day that I graduated high school, supposed to be um, a very a momentous day, I go to my car, I'm still in my cap and gown, um, and we had our graduation at the university. When I drove across the street to the convenience store to get gas, I witnessed a murder at the gas pump oh my God. in my cap and gown. And so the girl that pulled up, this girl pulled up, she got out and stabbed another girl. And she almost wrecked, she, the girl was pumping gas on the other side of the pump from me. So as you could imagine, I had a very close up uh, visual of this. So when the girl jumped out and she started stabbing the girl, her truck almost hit my car for one. And for two, it happened so quickly, I didn't know she was attacking me. So I immediately grabbed the crowbar out of the car and I started beating her too. And I actually 
kind of intervened, but it didn't matter because I could already tell the girl's wound was fatal. Mm-hmm. So I, I basically grabbed the girl off of her. I hit the girl with the crow part. I, I pulled the girl off of her and I told her, I said, how, how could you, you know, uh, taint my graduation like this? Yeah. And I, re- and I refused to be a witness in a murder trial. I refused to be a witness in this. And I, and so I told her she better not mention my name. I don't know nothing about this. There were several other witnesses in the parking lot that they could have got, gotten statements from. Mm-hmm. But that was like, at that point, that was like the fifth murder I'd witnessed. I'm just over it. <laughs> I'm just yeah. over it. I'm just yeah. so like, so I cleaned myself up real quickly. I jumped in my car and I left the parking lot before I got caught with all of the police and kind of got trapped in the parking lot. Yeah. Um, so that's, and that was broad daylight. And a graduation's going on across the street. Okay. So she very so she very likely did witness that. If I had to guess, she did witness that. It just didn't happen at school. That part's a lie. Okay. That's mm-hmm. an absolute lie. Now we were on national news. We had several while me and Tisha were in high school together, we had several riots that reached the point of the National Guard came in and took over our school. So oh my God. we had, We had two officers in each classroom with gloves on in their, I guess you would call it their peace uniform, um, their white gloves. And they just sat in class with us. We weren't allowed to speak in class. It was lecture only. Um, If we had to use the restroom, we had to be escorted by one of the National Guard. So we did have a violent high school, um, but there's there was never any murders, bodily injury for sure. And she may have seen someone get stabbed, but I know for sure there's been no homicides at our high school. Yeah. That's a lie. As we know, she likes hyperboles. So she, yeah, stretched, yeah. she stretched that one. Right. So she might have seen, experienced it and then she just made it more exciting by saying it. Right. Before, and, yeah. an- and another thing that she is being honest about, and one thing for sure the FBI knows <laughs> is Our area has a lot of organized crime. We do have cartel links here. We do Mm -hmm. have organized crime here. That's why the violence is so bad here. So she very likely does have ties to organized crime criminals. Um, Mm -hmm. But the FBI was smart enough to know that if had they been involved, they would have had a phone trail, some kind of evidence to point to that. So they they knew in that interview the FBI knew, yes, yeah, she probably does know organized crime, criminals, or the cartel, but it's not involved here, not right. not this time. But she was trying to use all of those facts to, you know, fabricate whatever she was trying to say. And the thing is, she likely has offended someone to the point where that's why she didn't want to live too close anyway. And she likely could have offended people that were looking like the what the um part of the trial where I was saying that she'd been paranoid earlier that month or something about somebody looking for her for a hit and run and stuff. That could likely not be delusional. Mm-hmm. When I hear when I hear that, I could say, yeah, I could see that bitch making some people back home mad or the right because it could happen. That could be very likely. Yeah, it could did be very she, likely. Did you feel like she lied a lot back then? Or... Lied a lot, yes. She was known as a lot. Yes. Um, I feel like she's like a pathological liar in a way. Yes, like, yes she is. Um, just lie for no the, reason. The biggest lie that I remember, thinking back to our time together, uh, and it was a hilarious lie, too. We come back from spring break, and so that Monday, it's natural when you get in class. As classmates, you're asking each other, what, what did you do on spring break? Where did you go? What were you doing? Well, guess what her story was? Guess where... Tisha went for spring break. <laughs> she was on a yacht in Miami. When I tell you I fell out my chair laughing, I just laughed and laughed and laughed and, laughed and squealed and laughed. I was crying. I was, and every time I would laugh, she would come up with a new detail to try to convince me. And every new every new detail, I would just get weaker and weaker. I'd be like, stop, please, stop, please. Lord, she said the captain's name. Oh, my God. Girl, please stop. Because for one, we're in the county, the highest pos- poverty rate in the state. Mm-hmm. And the classmates that we have that are doc- their parents were doctors and lawyers, they, they're they not even coming in here saying they were on a yacht in Miami. What are you talking about? Yeah. And another thing, I, so after I got 
because I almost got in trouble. Knowing me, I probably did get in trouble. I just could not. That entire class period, I laughed and laughed. I could not stop laughing because she kept adding detail like no you don't believe me but but we did this and 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 I was like no I don't believe you and so the next day when I come to class because um she's been in prison now so she's extra pale but um when I come to class the next day I was like look you guys there's the pale girl that was in Miami for spring break <laughs> on a yacht yeah yes <laughs> on a yacht, yacht. she's the oh palest my, one in the oh room my. but she was there yes she was <laughs> so she didn't she hated my, my mom said it's a wonder she she didn't try to hurt me which I felt it come to a point where I started feeling like she was well or was oh. at least wanted to but yeah. but it's because I would call her out for stuff like that yeah um because what are you what do you mean you were on a yacht? And that's when our mutual friend would be like, you know that that girl's, you know she's not right. You can tell something's not right with her. You ain't got to pick at her like you do. I said, I'm not picking at her. I'm, that's just, I can't, I mean, you know, if we're going to be delusional together, you got to give me a heads up. Like, I can't <laughs> I can't be the one that's buying it and you're the one selling it. Like, we got to sell oh it together. God. It's <laughs> only it's only funny if we sell it together. Person. Yeah, exactly. You got to let me know. Like, we're going to go tell them we were on the yacht and then we'll, yeah. we can back each other's lie up. You know, I mean, we got to oh we got to come with it and we got to have some spray tan. We can't be pale. Yeah. When we tell this lie. You know, so, oh you know, she just wasn't my cup of tea because I can be, you know, I'm down with uh, with a good time, too. But we just I just can't. Not not the way she was. Yeah. No, not wow. the way she was. Did she get any getting any physical fights with anybody at school? Actually, yes, she did. Um, this is like as much as I could tell you, I could never tell you it all. But this, it gets crazier and crazier as, as it goes because she's crazy. It just gets crazy. You know, the longer mm-hmm. you know her, the more crazy stuff's going to happen. Yeah. So you, you've you heard in her um, criminal report or yeah, her criminal, criminal record. Um, the bomb threat she had. I was in school when she had the bomb threat. Here I go having to leave my class out in the field. It's hot. I'm sweating. I'm ready to go in the, in the school and then find out she's the one did the bomb threat. Like, bitch, are you, are you crazy? Wow. So wow. I've, she I've got pers- for that too. She yeah, did, in yeah. Her charges. I went over. Yeah. She, yeah, she did. Yeah, she done the bomb threat at our high school. So I've wow. personally been affected by her craziness. Like I was mm-hmm. out there in the field because of her life. God. I'm out here sweating. <laughs> And I'm ready to go to school and, and I'm ready to eat. And, and I find out Tisha's lying again. For what? You know? Um, so when she was in the 12th grade, which would have been when I was in 10th. So this was our second year course. Um, and she was dating Chance. I was going to uh, ask. Okay. Dad. Yeah. I, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. First of all, I don't know Chance personally. I do not remember Chance going to our school. Therefore, I think she met and knew Chance from when she went to Lumberton High. Okay. Because if I'm not mistaken, he's from Saddle Tree, and that's a Lumberton High School district. But I don't remember Chance. But I, I, the reason I know it was him is because of the timeline of when Harley was born. But mm-hmm. ir- irregardless, she always talked about a boyfriend. And because she lied so much, I thought it was imaginary. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, so I was like, the, uh, I was yeah. like, oh yeah, Tisha, where's your? Because I never seen her with a boyfriend, a boy. So I was like, yeah, I don't. Mm-mm. I was like, he's got to be special to be with you. Like, I mean, <laughs> where is he at? I have to meet him. You mm-hmm. know. So she talked. She was talking for the whole first year about the boyfriend. So the second year of course, she's still talking about the same boyfriend, which I'm still assuming was fake. And she'd already been faking pregnancies too. And the classmates were like, you know, that she's the type to lie about being pregnant. I was like, well, that's not a surprise. Like, yeah. so, I mean, of course. So she'd already been lying about pregnancies. And so um, she started coming to class really angry, arguing, telling me all this stuff. And she don't make no sense anyway. So when she's upset, it's really discombobulated. And I'm like, girl, what is your crazy ass talking about? And she was like, um, this girl had been talking to her boyfriend. She's going to beat her up, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, girl, you're going to get beat up. The world. I, don't, I didn't even know the girl she was talking about. But I was like, that girl's going to beat you up. I was like, I don't know her, but I got my money's on her. And she yeah. was like, well, you're going to see. We're going to fight after school today. And I said, all right, then. So they were, they had planned 
on meeting off campus and fighting. So I re- I was still riding the bus because I was in 10th grade and didn't have my license yet. So our bus driver was very unprofessional. And on our way home that e- afternoon, um, we got to this dead end road and the bus driver pulled over and everybody was getting off. And I went and asked the bus driver, I said, why is everybody getting off? And she said, oh, they asked me if I would stop the bus and let them go to the fight today. So everybody's getting off to go to the fight. And I said, who's fighting so I asked some of the kids that were still getting off the bus and they was like I don't know some some older girls and somebody said their name and I said you know what I bet it's Tisha she said she was meeting a girl after school today to fight and so I asked them again I said is it Tisha and such and such and they were like yeah and I said I'm not getting off the bus and walking all the way down that dead end road to watch her get beat up like it's hot and I'm ready to go home so I said I'm gonna sit on the bus and y'all tell me what happened and so I sat on the bus and then everybody come back and they you know it took about 20 minutes I guess and then when everybody come back they were like oh they jumped her they jumped her well I never knew because they didn't really know the girls fighting they couldn't really articulate who got jumped and I was Mm -hmm. hoping it was Tisha I was like God I hope she got jumped so (laughs) um so the next day when I got to class she had one little scratch on her face and she was just smiling like the devil, the way you see her smiling and trying out, she's just smirking and stuff. And I was like, what you smiling for? And she was like, I told you I wasn't going to get beat up. And I said, damn, I, I said, I, I had hoped it was you that got jumped. I said, I should have <laughs> known it was you that jumped the other girl. Of course oh it was God. you. I said, of course it was you that jumped the other girl. So she had got two other girls to go with her. And then all three of them jumped the girl. Oh and I God. and so I told her, I said, girl, if I would have known that that girl was down there getting jumped by you, I would have got off the bus and effed you up. I would have yeah. went and helped her. I it's said, not no, a fight. You, know, yeah, you can't jump someone. Right. And so I told her, but she was bragging. She Her ego was tall as the roof that day. And so I had to chop her down real bad that day because I was like, listen, you don't get no brownie points for jumping somebody. It wasn't a no. fair fight. It wasn't a fair fight. And they put the girl in the hospital. That's why if you see her, her record, her assault with bodily harm, that's when she put the girl in the hospital. They jumped her. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I saw so, that. Right. Yeah, she definitely has that charge. Wow. That so, doesn't surprise me that she would fight unfair like that, you know, like fight fair. To, yes, you know? that's right. And so um, I pulled one of the, I can't remember if it was that day or another day, which I've done it several times. I'm not going to lie. And that particular day, I pulled my knife on her and I told her, I said, and that's why I bring my knife to school every single day for bitches like you. Yeah. Because y'all were not. <laughs> No. I so it. I pulled my knife on Tisha several times, yeah. several times. I wanted her to know that I, I had a weapon on me at all times mm-hmm. because I, I didn't trust her. I didn't even like her standing behind me in chorus when we sang. Like I would stop mm-hmm. singing my part and the chorus teacher would say, well, why did you, why did you stop singing? I said, because this girl's behind me. You know, I don't sing if she's behind me. Can't be wow. distracted. I could, yeah. I just could like the hair would be on the back of my neck. I just could not. She had to be to the left or right of me so I could see her out the corner of my eye. Because the way chorus is, we had stadium steps that we stood Mm -hmm. up on. So she was behind me, but she was standing up above me. Um, And I sung the first part, which she didn't like either, because she was like, how'd she get the first part? And she's a freshman. Well, because I can sing. That's why I'm in chorus. (laughs) Um, But um, I didn't like her standing directly behind me. I just could not, I couldn't stand it. (laughs) Oh, I didn't, I never liked her sitting near me. I had to be able to look at her because I just didn't trust her. She gave me the heebie-jeebies. She did. And the girl, because they found the girl, because she had the jump girl jump off campus, she didn't get suspended. But what they did was obviously the girl press charges and the school, the only punishment the school gave was she was not allowed to attend her senior prom because of the Mm -hmm. fight which she had Harley like could you remember exactly what year Harley was born because seems like when she went right after she graduated it was not long at all that she was pregnant or Harley, Harley was born and so I put two and two together I said well the boy she was fighting over had to be chance because she had Harley not long after Okay. Right. So I just put those two, two and two together. 
So maybe her imaginary boyfriend wasn't imaginary after all. I'm sorry, I was wrong. <laughs> that one time. Right? Just that yeah. one time, that one time. <laughs> wow. Like so did you ever see any other personalities you believe she has DID? Um, for this interview, anyways, I, I told myself before I come on that I was going to try to keep it factual. Whatever videos I do on my channel will probably be more introspective and okay. more religious and more religious, to just be honest. Um, mm -hmm. But you see online the social media, you've seen this comment probably a million times. She's not crazy. She's evil. I'm mm -hmm. on. I'm, I'm typically on that side of, of thinking because I felt personally when I knew her in class, I felt like she was possessed. I just did. Yeah. Um, I felt like she was evil when I knew her. And, and I've never said that about very many people. Like I, like I tried to think about it, like how, how many people have ever given me that feeling. But the thing is I had already been around evil before I met her. So mm -hmm. when I met her, I had the same physical reaction. So it's like, I knew before I knew, because I was like, why am I feeling like this? I only feel like this when I'm around such and such. So yeah. I was like, yeah, it's the same. Yeah, that girl. And, and it was so bad that if I was sitting in course at a table with my back to the classroom door, if I was having a conversation with a friend and all of a sudden I would get cold chills on my arm and I would say that girl's walked in the classroom, didn't she? Wow. And, they, and they would say, how did you know? I said, because every time she comes around me, I get cold chills. I have a physical reaction every time she come in the room, even when I couldn't see her. And to me, that says a lot. Wow. That says a wow. lot to me. Yeah. yeah. Because how do I know she's in? Why am I getting cold chills and my back's to the door? I don't even know she's in here yet. So I, I, I personally feel like she she's possessed. That's just my, and I know that there, you know, I know you get a real gray area there um, with mental health. You know, um, my, mm -hmm. my family, my mother is in psych nursing. So I have a respect for the mental health field. And, mm -hmm. and that's not to say that all DID patients are possessed. And that's not mm -hmm. to say all mental health is possession. But I feel like that she's a special case. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel that. like she's a special case. Um, and, and it was from my whole time around her. And it was really just those gut feelings and how she made me feel, you know. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm with the general consensus that she's just evil. So, yeah, yeah. I saw I saw different personalities, but it, it come across to me like, damn, you got a demon in you, bitch. Mm -hmm. Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> like, are you OK? Like, yeah. I'm glad I'm glad I bring my Bible to class I, every faithfully every day for you, Tisha, for you. Yeah. You know, let's read a verse. You know. wow. But I shared I and, and, and like I said, I took the positive approach with her at first because I had those talks about, like I said, the, the cycle abuse. And, and I showed her I was like, look, when I'm rageful, when I'm angry, when I'm having a bad day, that's when some days I would come to class and I wouldn't speak to anybody. Mm -hmm. And that was just one of my days. I was just very quiet that day. But those are the days I wrote in my journal all day. And I would just release how I was feeling. And that's what I told her. I said, you got to have all those feelings and emotions in you. There has to be a healthy release. And if you don't find it, it you'll start releasing it in unhealthy ways. Um, we had all those conversations, but she wasn't interested in that. To me, she'd already chose what side and how she was going to do and be and that's how we've ended up here today and that's the sad part yeah. and and the sad part is since she's always wanted to cloak as this badass like I plan on writing her I plan on writing her I made the conscious decision to write her three years ago when, when the crime happened but I wanted to wait because I don't want to talk to her why she thinks she's still got a chance I want to wait till the trial's completed and then I'm going to write her Mm -hmm. You know, that's because I wanted to get all the details from the trial, all of that. My cat. <laughs> um, oh, my yeah, my cat just scared the crap out of me. Mm -hmm. um, Were you surprised I'm, when you heard about? Not at all. Be, okay. No, nope, nope, I wasn't surprised at all. I, what I was, no, I wasn't surprised in any way. But what made me angry was, if it, excuse my language, I don't want to mess up your video. But no. I just had a lot of curse words because I was like, you've cloaked as a badass all these years, which, of course, I knew she wasn't. 
-hmm. but that's the you know what she would have you believe but um if you were so angry and so rageful and so resentful that you wanted to crash out of your marriage in a homicidal rage bitch kill your husband i know that don't sound but at least yeah. it's a, at least it's a fair fight Yep. At least it's a fair it fight. Would make don't make more don't, sense than this. Don't yeah. don't pick on the child, the weaker one, like that. Yeah. You, just like she had that girl jumped. When she wants to be mean and rageful and violent, she always goes the pussy foot route. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. just to me. There's no honor in that, even in the streets, even in a criminal mindset. There's no honor in that. Yep. If you want to crash out in a homicidal rage instead of divorce, then wait the owl comes home and get get it in. Right. Yeah, it's a good take thing. it she out on the weaker him. one, yeah. But she went with the weaker one. And and another thing that, that angers me about it is, um, even in class I noticed this, like our mutual friend, she was the sweetest person in the class. And she and the reason they were friends is because she gave her endless endless um benefits of the doubt, endless grace, endless mercy. There was, you know, she, she would just, Oh, it's all right. You know? So she, to me, she always sought out those really good hearted people that were just going to be long suffering and patient with her, no matter what, because they're yeah. that kind of a good person. Whereas somebody like me, I'm going to give you all of that. But as soon as I see that you're not genuine, that you're being mm -hmm. manipulative, then, I, then all of that is going to go away and I'm going to give you what you give me. And that's mm -hmm. how I was. So, you know, she I wasn't the one that was going to give her that. And I say that to say she knew that she had picked that person in out. She oh, knew that she yeah. knew that if, if she had, in other words, if she had married, well, even when she was married to Champ, I, I didn't even know they were legally married into the case. But if she had been married to a man back home of our own race, of our own community, she would have never done this because as soon as he would have got home and shit didn't add up right, he would have beat her head into the between the washer and the dryer until she told him what the hell happened. There would have been no, oh, let's go to Starbucks and we're going to have a family meeting there. And the child's mom, the whole family would have physically attacked her. There would have been no lies to be told because the whole it would have been a very ugly mess mm -hmm. you know so she would not have even done this to another person or to another man that she felt like would have been volatile towards her right of course the she way wants to pick people she can manipulate right so, she, so i think she has like some kind of personality disorder maybe borderline um yeah. and they pick people like that you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying because they can manipulate them and and take you know take right. them advantage You're of them. Absolutely right. Yeah. And I felt very validated because because my mother is in psych nursing. I knew about the DCM in high school. I had all mm -hmm. this knowledge. That's why I was able to use those tools for myself. Um, but I had already told her that she was BPD. I told her in high school, even showed her what it was. You know, wrote, read it to her, everything. So. I felt very validated when she was uh, evaluated at the, the state hospitals and stuff. And they felt like, I know they think, I think they called her what, um, I forget their official diagnosis, but BPD come up a lot in their evaluations. And I said, mm -hmm. I was right. I was so right. I told her she was a BPD. Yep. I knew it because I have someone in my family like that too. And that's probably another reason why I saw her coming. I didn't have any blinders on because I'd already experienced someone similar to her. Hmm. Um, what did she I, say when you told her that is she was she like in denial like no she no, wasn't she wasn't in denial it's it's all about where we our community like a lot of southern minority communities mental health has a big stigma it always has it still does mm -hmm. um i have professionals in my family that are um professionals in the medical field and they know they have mental illness, but they have never sought out mental health treatment. They choose to try to self-medicate or, or whatever. It's just such a stigma in our community. And just like when I did share that with her, she was like, you know, well, I'm not going to talk to nobody about our problems. We don't do that. And that's the kind of general consensus in our community that we don't do that. And like I told her, 
if you're not going to do that, I was like, sure. You know, I come from a family like that also. But that's why, like I just shared with you, I have my journal. I have music. I have all these coping things. So in other words, if you're not going to go and get professional help, then you need to be learning all you can about yourself and and, and doing some kind of self-work. Because if you're not going to do the self-work, then you need to go see a professional. Mm-hmm. And I I knew I knew that I needed therapy or something. Like I said, I had just witnessed a murder before I started ninth grade. And that put a real big cloud over starting ninth grade for me. And I, I knew that I needed some kind of counseling or something. But like like she said, and, and she, she's not lying, we, we don't come from a community where that's looked at as an important need for, right. our, for our health. We're encouraged to um, seek God and, and all of those things are are good because those things have gotten me where I, where I am today. During mm-hmm. that time in my life, I'd had people tell me that I was going to end up in prison for murder and this and that. And mm-hmm. I would tell them, I would say, first of all, you know, um, don't judge my future. You, nobody can judge my future. I hated that. I felt like that was some kind of curse people were trying to put on me. But if, but if anything, I'm very proud to say that I've reached this age and I've ne- I've, I don't have a felony. I, I have a pretty clean criminal record and mm-hmm. I haven't crashed out and hurt anyone. And if I did, you can guarantee it would be an adult. <laughs> it would <laughs> never be a child, you know? Yeah. Um, so... <laughs> When it happened, I wasn't surprised. When I seen who it was, I was like, not the, oh my God. I think that like, like, that speaks volumes in itself. Like just the fact that you heard about it and you were not surprised. Like that no. sums up like. <laughs> no, everything. I wasn't. No, I wasn't. And, and it's sad too, because for our people and we have, there's enough bad press about us. Mm-hmm. And so another headline news that's just it just it's another dagger in our heart like you know people already have enough bad things to say about us Mm -hmm. why would you do our community like that that's why her family's so mad because this is never going to go away she'll never be accepted by our people again she'll never be welcomed back home again her family's going to be shunned forever probably and that's another reason she couldn't just be a real person because like the prosecutor said, when, when, when I discussed the case with my mom, that was the first thing she said. She said if she had had a true break, she would have never covered it up. People that have breaks, they don't cover it up. They're mm-hmm. immediately remorseful. They're sorry. They, they call for help. They don't hide it. They don't deny it. They, it just is what it is. And, and they're usually very remorseful about it. You know? um, she yeah. said, so my mom didn't think at all that it was a break. Uh, as far as a psychosis break. Um, and, and her brother, as you heard on the stand, her brother don't either. And she is smart. He's not lying. She's too smart to be. And he, obviously she's not smart at all with all her Google searches. And stuff. But she's very simple minded. She's <laughs> yeah. like, she's very dingy and airheady. Like yeah. um, she had an obsession with the only thing that I could think that we actually related on was I would also bring magazines. I would have magazines in my book sack, and she loved to ask me to borrow my cosmetology magazine. And she Mm -hmm. loved to look at my magazines. And she had a weird obsession with celebrities. That's why I wasn't surprised when she was a Kim K fan. I said, oh, yeah, when we were in high school, it was J-Lo. She loved Mm -hmm. J-Lo. And I would be like, girl, you don't even know these people. You, I'm not going to sit here and talk to you for a whole hour in class about J-Lo and Ben Affleck. I'm just not that kind of girl. <laughs> yeah. You know, but she could go on and on. She knew every, she knew every celebrity, like who was dating who and who, you know, she knew all the celebrity gossip. And so she liked to borrow my magazines, but it come to a point where I quit letting her get my magazines too. So I was just done with her. And it got to the point where I didn't even, cause she wanted some kind of reaction out of me, whether it was positive or negative, and I just got to the point where I was done with her, so I would ignore her. When she spoke to me, I wouldn't re- wouldn't respond. I would not look at her. It got to the point where I completely shunned her, basically. Yeah. And and that's how that was the only way I knew how to deal with her because it was something all the time. So, um, and actually during that time that I had shunned her, this is where it there's a whole nother little chapter of us knowing each other. Um, so. 
I got into the era, era of knowing her where I was shunning her. And so I got involved in Teen Corp. I don't know about other places, but it was put in place here. It was something I was in business law classes and stuff. And so they come to us and they told us that they were creating this institution called Teen Corp. We were going to help create it. We were going to um, help design it, how we wanted it to be, the class that I was in. And mm -hmm. We were going to, when kids got in trouble in the county, instead of them going to juvenile or to real court, we were going to try them in teen court where they mm -hmm. would have teen representatives for a defense and a prosecutor. And so our business law class could have mock trials, but actually mm -hmm. deal with real cases that involved our classmates. That's um, interesting. So, yeah, I loved yeah, it. I was so really, excited. Yeah, so cool. we, we got to design it and kind of like all of the protocols and, and everything. And it took us like a whole semester to create it and design it. And then the next semester, we started taking cases and we started going to the courthouse and learning how to do the trials. And there was a whole lot of a lot, a lot of time in getting it all together. And so I was the way it would basically go, we would have a box of cases. And I was a defense attorney is what I chose to be. Um, and it, it had a lot to do with my AG status, but I was a defense attorney and I could go to the box of cases and just look through the folders and I could kind of choose which case I wanted to maybe represent. And then I had contact information for that student and their parents and I could reach out to them and set up um, so a time for us to start going over the case and see if they would allow me to represent them. So I was going through the cases and I happened to see this address that was from my community. And because we're Native American community, each community is basically a sub community within the bigger community. So um, I saw an address on one of the cases from my local community. And I said, well, this is my area. So I want to help, you know, one of my classmates out that's where, from where I'm from. So I pulled that case. And so I called the girl and I called her mom and I set up a time to discuss the case. And so they come to the um, high school, to the library, if I'm not mistaken. And we had our first meeting. Well, lo and behold, when when the girl come in, because I didn't know her already, I, I said, hey, how you doing? And then in behind her comes Tisha. And I thought that she was just walking through the library because, you know, it's still a public library in, in school. She can come in the library she wants. So I was like, what are you doing here? What is she doing here? What are you? Are you just at the library? And so she sits down where the the people where we're sitting, and I was. And then I looked at the paper a little closer, and I realized that the student that I'd called for the meeting, she had a code defendant. And I said, Oh my God, never mind. I can't take this to this case. I'm sorry. I said, listen, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for wasting your time. I'm so sorry for wasting your time. But I cannot and will not take your case. And so her mom was very emotional. Why? I know that you can help my daughter. Please take the case. And I was like, no, I can't take the case because she's your co-defendant. So if I represent you, I have to represent her also. And she was like, really? I was like, really? I was just so kind of confused and shocked by it all. I ended the meeting and I walked out the library and I was very upset. And so the girl's mom run out and kind of caught me in the hallway and she was crying volunteers because she cared about her daughter. And if she got charged with those charges, she was likely going to go to juvenile hall. And she was like, my daughter's young. That other girl, you know, was a bad influence on her. Please do it for her. If you don't want to do it for the other girl, at least do it for my daughter. Hmm. And I said, well, give me, give me a night to think about it. And by tomorrow, I'll let you know for sure. So by the next day I thought about it and I prayed about it. And I come to school the next day and I told the other student, I said, listen, I've made a decision. I said, I will take your case under one condition that Tisha never comes to our meetings and that she never speaks to me. Because I already was in the shunning era of knowing her, so I don't speak to her. And she was like, well, I'll have to talk to her about it and see if she'll agree with it. I said, well, you need to tell her that I represent y'all's case. If she don't come to the meetings and she never speaks to me throughout the whole process, she's not allowed to say one word to me. And she said, OK, I'll go talk to her. So she come back later and told me that Tisha had agreed. And I said, OK, cool. So I took their case 
And so the charge you see on her record for um, Grand Theft Auto, they had stolen the driver's ed car from school. Tisha drove the driver's ed car from school and kept it all day. And she brought it back like four o'clock in the afternoon. And Tisha was a senior and this girl was a freshman. Whereas at that time I was a sophomore. So she basically was a bad influence on the girl. The girl basically was just riding with her. So when I done their case, I emphasized to the judge that, you know, my client was very young, very impressionable, that the girl that was older and driving should be held more responsible than her. So I was basically arguing strictly for the younger client, Mm -hmm. the younger student. Um, But nonetheless, I won their case and I won their case. And the way it was situated was both girls, if they would do community service and some other things, basically service oriented, like seems like they might have had to do something over the summer at the board of education, something, it was all service related stuff. And if they would do some, so many hours of that community service that the charges would be dropped and they would not appear on their record. Tisha abided by my rules. She never spoke to me during the whole case. She never come to our meetings. I won her case. Well, her dumb ass did not even go do the community service. That's why when she got the charges for the bodily harm for jumping the girl, the judge put them concurrent together because she never completed the community service hours that I won for her. So had she done the community service hours, that charge would not have even been on her record today. And I represent it. So imagine me watching this trial and I have been her defense attorney before, at least in a mock trial in a juvenile teen court. It was very triggering for me because she sat at that table in our case, exactly like she sat in this one with her hair hanging over her face. That's exactly how she sat in court. (laughs) When we had her grand theft auto charge. Wow. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Yeah. And that why? (laughs) Like what is her what does she think that's getting? I don't know. Yeah. It's like like that. Her presentation of herself is horrible at this trial. Like, yeah, it doesn't. It it was very I had a lot of I um later in life I did seek out mental mental health for myself. Um, I have been diagnosed with PTSD, which she likely has too. But Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you watching this trial so many times it would trigger my PTSD, like having flashbacks of being in that juvenile court and teen court with her arguing her case for her grand theft auto charge and looking back, talking to the judge, talking to the jury, and then looking back at the table and she's over there looking like a retard. Well, yeah. Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, that's the bad way. She's over there looking <laughs> like a freak. Yeah. She's just over there looking like a freak. I apologize. It's a very ugly word. That's right. But she, going back it, it is. It really. Life. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I was in my high school, in my high school voice. But I mean, you know, I'm up there doing a good job. I put a lot of time in this case and I'm up here arguing for her. And, and, and I look back and she's just taking a nap and slobbering on the table. I mean, it's just oh like. What are you doing? Um, and what's, and one thing I'm very, um, one thing that I love that I can say is at the end of that case, when I won it, I could give my, basically for our closing arguments, whatever, I could basically try to persuade the judge on what the sentencing should be. Um, it was still up to him, but I could uh, basically ask him, uh, suggest the sentencing that I think would be appropriate. Mm -hmm. And it would be up to him to choose. And so when I gave my suggestion for their punishment, I I did give the suggestion of community service. But for for Tisha, I asked for her to be evaluated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I asked for her to have some kind of intervention because I felt like she had some kind of mental or emotional problems. And the judge looked at me and he looked at her and I told you how she'd been sitting the whole time. And he kind of nodded his head like, obviously, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> but he told me that he didn't have, um, you know, that he didn't. This wasn't the proper avenue that he couldn't. He could not add it to her to her punishment. Mm. 
And I was like, well, that's too bad. And I just walked back to the table. Yeah. <laughs> so I tried. So like the whole trial, I was like, you know what? At least I tried my best to get that girl some help in her, in her Grand Theft Auto case. I swear I did. Mm-hmm. I asked the judge to make it mandatory for her to get some counseling, therapy, something like that. Something, yeah. Something. Yeah. And he said that he, he couldn't, that he, that he couldn't uh, enforce that. And I was like, well, that's just too bad. <laughs> I was like, it's <laughs> just too bad. bad. Yeah. And then, and then when I heard, now fast forward, me being in that, that court case with her in teen court, that was the very last time I ever saw Tisha. Mm-hmm. It was like, I never had another occurrence with her. When I got to college, she was at the college, but I never ran into her, thank God. And then she quit going soon after I got to the college. So, but I've heard a lot of her college classmates that say that she was out there being weird too. So, which I'm I not bet surprised. She was. Um, yeah, I bet she was. So, yeah, yeah bet. She, she came out weird. Yeah, she really, she really <laughs> yeah. did. She I mean, from, I, I, I really do. I feel like, and to be honest, when I heard Dr. Lewis's testimony, that was the only thing I could agree with Dr. Lewis was if you would, if you listen, one thing that, that she said several times was she feels like there's a mental defect. And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. yep, 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 yep. She needs more than the MRI. She, she should have been had MRI, CT, yep. MRI. She needs all, cause I go to the neurologist. She needs to be at all the doctors because, yeah. but I, but Dr. Lewis, what I heard her say several times that she felt like the girl had a mental defect. And, and I feel the same way. I yeah. absolutely do. Um, yeah. But I still do not agree. I still do not think she reaches that all of her issues. I don't care if it was from her a softball injury, from a birth genetic disorder, whether it was from whatever the case. Mm-hmm. I do not think she still raises to the level of criminally insane, at least by their definition. No. And that's right. why that's why the prosecutor would ask, did she know how to rent that car? Could she did she know to stop at the red light, and the green light? Mm-hmm. Did she right. know? Uh, and, you know, all of these things. And that shows that. And, and it also shows that she's been at least been in society all these years. She quit all those jobs and she went to school online because she has that personality disorder. She can't mm-hmm. be around people for too long. She, it's uncomfortable for her. Mm-hmm. It is. I can tell because by the end of our class period, which was an hour every time, she was more stressed at the end of the class period than she was at the beginning, no matter what the environment was. She just yeah. get the longer we were there, the more anxious she got. Yeah. You know, um, I, I just observed that. And I, so I asked her, I said, are you claustrophobic? Because I'm very claustrophobic. Mm-hmm. And I would tell her, I said, that's why I sit at the chair closest to the door. That's uh, so where, it was like that's, manifesting itself physically, her, her anxieties and stuff, enough for you to ask that question? Yeah, because she would get more fidgety. I could tell that she was like moving more. And I'd be like, girl, what is wrong with you? <laughs> and so yeah. I told her, I told her, I didn't, most of our classmates were already smoking marijuana and stuff. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't try marijuana until I was in college. So I never tried any drugs at all. I've never done any drugs other than marijuana, but I never tried marijuana until college. And so because of all of her anxiety, I could see, I was like, girl, you need to go smoke a blunt with the, yeah. with, the with the kids out there behind the mm-hmm. mobile unit. You need to go yeah. and check the boys out. But I think they were smoking right now, actually. You know, you need to go out there. And so apparently she was the type and some people are like this. She was the type that when she smoked marijuana, she got very paranoid. So she couldn't smoke marijuana. She didn't get the common effect that most people got. It, it, It was a bad, a bad high for her. So I was like, well, that's too bad. That's just too bad. I was yeah, like, hoping something you know, would, would help in some way. Right. But what, and she never shared this with me personally, but from the chitter chatter of our classmates in cores and from some of the things that I was privy to in her teen court case, um, I think her drug of choice was Xanax. Hmm. Um, I know that she was popping some, and that was a common thing for the girls. The way that she's kept her weight down all these years is very obviously to me pills. And that's why she's gaining so much weight in jail because she don't have access to any kind of pills. <laughs> mm. You know, so mm. I've, I've always yeah. assumed that she had a pill habit. 
And it's funny when I heard her say in the interviews, like, I don't do drugs. And, and I was like, I didn't know in high school, but I know now. Um, a lot of the girls like her that, that like to try to blend in with everybody else, if they did have a drug test or something, pills are out of your system in three days. So yeah. it's not, you know, it's not anything that is going to stop her from getting a job or, you know, anything like that. Um, but I was always under the impression in school and it come out in the trial. You see how many times she was asking for whatever that anxiety medicine was in the interviews. She asked everybody for it, I thought. <laughs> but I was like, this girl's in the interview begging for pills. Ain't a thing. Girl, mm -hmm. you still... <laughs> what yeah <laughs> what so i don't well, know why please. she probably if she could have got with a good psychiatrist and actually she was married to a service member you know she could have she had good tri care she could have went to the doctor you know good and well she could have found a psychiatrist to give that girl some legal xanax and maybe she would have been a better person i don't know she needed something something, something. Yeah. Some yeah. medicine for sure. Yeah. Instead of trying to keep up that facade of I, I'm okay, I'm normal, when you're not okay and you're not normal. I knew mm -hmm. I wasn't okay. I knew I wasn't normal. Right. But mm -hmm. a lot of years of self help has helped me have whatever chance of normal life I could have had. Right. And with PTSD, one thing I've learned is I don't care how healed, even with this trial, I don't care how healed I think I am. I never know where when a new trigger might arise. Yeah. Like seeing her in court like that is very triggering for me. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just something. So I've learned that I don't care how healed and how much self-help you do. You, it's, it's very close to being an addict because you're not ever OK. You're just OK yeah. today. You're right. just okay right now. You know, it's just something you have to always be conscious about, you know. Um, but the abuse, like, and I've shared this with a few other people on YouTube. I do believe her abuse story. I just, mm -hmm. I, per I, I personally, I do. Um, because I could see, I could just relate when I felt I felt she was being general gen, genuine when we had that conversation. And not only that, the fact that she was living house to house and she had left uh -huh. her home, there was right. other um, evidence from our mutual friends that I believed that. And I yeah. was like, Oh yeah, I believe it because something's not right. Something's, yeah. something's not right. And, and I told her, and I was abused by my stepdad too. And I told her, I mean, that we related a lot. And, mm -hmm. and, and so that's why my mutual friend was like, I think you should share your story with her because it's very similar. But the only difference was, and she didn't want to look at the similarities. She wanted to point out the difference. Well, the difference is your mom left your stepdad. And I said, you damn right she did. Mm -hmm. You damn right she did. And me and my mom don't have a great relationship, but I'll always credit her for that. She put me in a safe environment. That's how I ended up back home here in North Carolina. I was born in another state, but I was being abused in, in, in my mom's marriage. So she left the marriage and we moved back home. And I told her, um, I, I said, I'm sorry. I, I wish your mom would have done that. But at the same time, there were other ways my mom couldn't provide the other things that I needed, whether she was a single parent and she also had her own issues. So I was basically telling Tisha, it's not a walk in the park just because my mom lived. Don't mean we're still not struggling. Don't mean I'm still not dealing with the effects of the abuse. It was something me and my mom argued about. Yeah. So, you know, I didn't go into all the details with Tisha, but I was just letting her know. Yeah. And, and I didn't bite my tongue. I, I was proud of my mom for leaving. Mm -hmm. But the difference is, and like I told her, my mom didn't have any substance abuse issues. Oh, and right. that's the that's the difference. My mom didn't have any drug issues. She had some mental health issues, but she chose education and self-help. And thank God she did, because that gave me a blueprint to, to know at least which direction to go in yeah. a healthy direction, yeah. not in a destructive direction. Yeah, thank God. She shouldn't have like. And a obviously to, to me, she had right. chose that direction along. Tisha chose a destructive direction. Yep. She did. And and so, I know I'm not I'm not the only person God sent in her life to have these conversations with. I'm sure other people have told her the same thing. Yeah. It just has to. Yeah.
I'm sure. You had mentioned, um, we have a question about the uh, head injury in softball. You had mentioned that she did play softball and everything, but you don't know about any specific head injury, right? I do. I do remember her getting her teeth knocked out. Okay. Yeah, I remember. I remember significant did she have, injury. They, did she have fake teeth? So that's a, one thing that everybody's wondering. I think. On. I like, think awesome. she has a partial or something. Okay. I think she has a partial. I don't think it was like it didn't like take out her whole grill, okay. but she like lost a tooth. Mm -hmm. So oh, she had okay. that that tooth, and I mean it did knock her out. And you know she used to beg me, like I told you, she begged me to join softball. And I told her, I said, there ain't no way because I know people like you, girls like you, and you specifically would try to hit me with the ball because no. you're too scared to fight me. And then I'm going to fight you on the field and then I'm going to look like the bad guy. Yeah, I, I wouldn't join anything with her because so she can't I'm be not, trusted, like you said. You can't trust uh, anything. And and we, yeah, and we had a mutual friend and had, I guess I got busy this week and I wasn't able to get up with her, but I have a mutual friend that has done some interviews on YouTube, on some other channels. And she was actually a softball teammate with her. Mm -hmm. And so me and me and that friend are still friends. And so we've gotten together and talked about it. And my friend that was on softball team with her, she was great girl. We're, like I said, we're still friends to the day, but she's just as aggressive as I am. <laughs> so on the field, her and Tisha had like a battering going on, but I would pick at Tisha about it. Cause I'd be like, yeah, you don't try that shit with my friend on the field though. Do you? Cause you know, she'll whip your ass. <laughs> yeah. My friend will whip your ass. Yeah. So um, my friend has a different stories to share. Maybe I could give you, I'm sure she wouldn't mind coming on either. And had mm -hmm. I not had a busier week, I, we would have come on together, but mm -hmm. she shared a lot of, cause on the softball field, that was where her aggression come out. That's where mm -hmm. she was the she was very egotistical on the on the softball field, very aggressive, very loud, very animated. Yeah. And my friend is was basically quiet on the field, but she was a strong player. And so she didn't appreciate how Tisha would basically be antagonizing people on the field. Like, come on, I, you know, shouting, just being loud. And she was yeah. like, You need to shut up. But she shared that she was had very poor sportsmanship she was very cocky if she didn't get a play or she's arguing with the refs so you know just you can yeah. imagine yeah not surprising. but she did she did have a softball injury on the field but I'm here to tell you that I knew her before that she was still <laughs> wow. yeah that, that I mean it, it probably didn't help none you know, yeah. but it didn't hurt no more than damage was cause. already done no I I got a strong feeling that she which I've seen some of Plunder's videos. Like she was like me. She had, she was a straight A student in elementary school. Hmm. So, but then even in high school she made A's, but she was still a dean bat. So I was yeah. like, girl, one thing, another thing, Dr. Lewis uh, said that I agree with that she had never met someone as complex mental health issues as her. I agree, never. I, I mean, I'm not a psychiatrist, but I've never come across someone because it's kind of hard to pinpoint because it's like, OK, you're smart, but you are something's wrong, wrong, yeah. you know, and like so you're just left thinking like I was like, girl, your mama had to be on drugs when she was pregnant with you. Like there is no other because there's a wire cross somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Like and since her wife. mom is an addict, like a, she, there's probably a good chance that she was on drugs when she had right. Her mom. Yeah, uh. I just I just assumed it had to be that. And to be honest, from what I can see and what I understand, her mom is a lot more stable later in life. Her mom was a better person and all that, and that's great because that shows some growth, you know. Uh. And it's just sad that you know Tisha's not gonna have that same opportunity. Uh, obviously, but I think that her mom did progress to to like Dakota said on the stand that she and you know you're gonna try to protect your mom. So I don't know if I 100% agree with everything Dakota said, but I think that I think that she very because her younger siblings, like her sister, doesn't have. I, I've asked some of her sister's friends, like you know, is is she strange? Is she like this, this, and that? And they're like, nah, she's cool. So from all accounts, her sister's very normal. 
Yeah. So I, I think that maybe whatever issues her mom had earlier in life, that hopefully she got over that and made some progress. And it probably happened when her abusive alcoholic husband died in 2004, which is the year I graduated. So maybe after the death of her husband, maybe she was able to, to start some kind of new better healthier life that's yeah. the only thing i can assume but I, I don't through, think um, her mom still go ahead i was just gonna say i don't think she's still actively an addict though that's good yeah, yeah we have 21 starred questions i just i was just gonna say i looked through them i think she covered all of them i also really so our guest's channel is triggered true crime um she said she would like to make a video about this case and uh as you know she was uh she knew Letitia back in high school, if you're just joining. Um, I want to give you the opportunity to speak about stuff on your channel and not, <laughs> and not you know, divulge. Well, all of here's what I'll say. Here's if, if this could get e even more triggering, at least for me, um, mm -hmm. I will say that the other big profile case, the, the Chris Watts case, um, mm -hmm. I actually casually, briefly knew Shanann. Really? What? They're, really? You know, I... They're here from our area too. Wow. So wow. Tisha, Tisha and Chris Watts are maybe 30, 30 minutes apart in a commute in a car commute. Wow. So I they're know. a county, they're a neighboring county to us. And so I knew Shanann. I met her um during some work. Uh, dear, when she was working at Dirty South Customs is when I met her and I knew her. So that case was pretty triggering for me, too, because I was like, wow. wow. And, and my phone. Oh, hold on one second. Mm -hmm. What's going on? You're difficulty. right. Like, the question she answered just by <laughs> talking. So I just went through them. I don't think there's anything left that she didn't already answer did you find any yeah. of the questions that she hasn't answered yet no if you could put it up yeah she's doing a good job just interesting just everything stuff. that people would want to know you know so yeah it's very interesting i mean i wasn't sure if i believed like the stuff she said she went through in her past so but now i do like what, what, what Letitia said yeah yeah what Letitia said yeah like i thought she was like because she she's lying about so much. It's hard to believe anything she says, you know? So, but obviously some of this stuff has to be true. So yeah, that's interesting that, that that stuff is true. Huh? Yeah. Cause there's no telling with her. Yeah. So, and that she lived on her own, like basically in high school. She, ooh, she dropped off. I mean, that's interesting too. Um, yeah. I think we lost her. Hopefully she'll pop back on. Yeah, this has been very interesting. Way more than I thought. Like way more stuff. Yeah, I think so. A lot of it, <coughs> excuse me, was coming back to her as she was talking about it too. Because you know how you reminisce about stuff, and yeah, then you remember more things. Yep. Wow. I'm still like absorbing everything, but th there was, that was a little, there's a lot of stuff to take in. Um, and it just like it doesn't surprise me, but. It's just, yeah, it's kind of it's weird picture her back then. It sounds like yeah, she really has not changed. Yeah, at not all. at all. I can see now, and that wow. was high school. That was a while ago too. So I wonder if Al is just like attracted to personalities like that. You know what I'm saying? Because how did he see that in her? Because you know, some people are like, just they um, attract like people with personality disorders, people with borderline. Yep. They attract those personalities just the same as the other way around. You know what I'm yep. saying? So I wonder if he's the type. I just wonder if his other relationships are have been know. like, yeah, crazy people or something. Wow. Man. Well, we'll wait. Um, <laughs> Even if she doesn't show back up, I mean, we, God, she covered a lot. She's really yeah. good at going through everything and explaining it. And, and I want to give her, you know, the the place to share more on her own uh, channel, too. Yeah. Um, but that was awesome. Yeah. 
maybe one of her kids got up or something because I know she has some kids. She said that's why she had to do it later. So yeah, we'll we'll wait a little bit. But wow, that was like she had a lot of insight into her. Um, there's just two <laughs> little questions I was going to ask that aren't really important, but because there's this big thing about like what Letitia's middle name is. There's like some. Some of it says one thing, and then she said one thing. So I just want to know if she knew, like, what what did she say her middle name was back then? And then also, I wonder if she had a good voice. <laughs> did she sing good? I don't know. I'm just curious. <laughs> Can she carry a tune? It's not important stuff. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, um, well, the middle name thing she talked about. I think she just said that she she didn't. No, I wanted to know what is the middle what, name. Oh, uh, what she just, said at that. Yeah, yeah. Like, what did she say her middle name was back then when you guys were talking about middle names? I was going to ask in the moment, but then it just kept going. I didn't want to interrupt because it was like such yeah, good stuff. And I didn't want to like mess her train of thought up because you know how that happens if you mess it up and they're saying something. But I don't know. She's pretty good. Even if I did interrupt, I think she'd be able to remember where she left off. Yeah. Um, can you ask what she thinks about letters, please, Sarah? About letters? What do you mean letters? Oh, Sarah Jean? Let's see what Sarah Jean said. Seen my qu okay, Sarah. Hold on, let me find your question. I'm I'm scrolling up. Da, 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 da. Do you see it, Juliet? Um, I don't see it, Sarah. I'm looking, but it. Oh, on the letter. Oh, what letters though? She did kind of go into it a little bit, the letters. Um, she talked about the whole thing where Letitia said about how she witnessed the murder, that, that it wouldn't surprise her if she did witness murder, but it wasn't at high school. What other specific thing about the letters do you want? If she comes back on, is there something specific about the letters you want me to ask her? I think she did read the letters because she's talking about how that part in particular, and that's from the letter about how she witnessed it. So she... Definitely read that letter, at least. The one to Kit Kat. Um, so. Also, I've seen a couple of people ask questions about stuff that uh, she definitely went over in the beginning. Um, so if you're coming in like halfway through or if you came in later, uh, right from the from the start, she was uh, divulging a lot of stuff. Yeah. So you could replay it um, and you might find an answer to what you were asking. Trigger, she's backstage, but I see her backstage, but I'm nervous. If you don't want to show your camera, I'm not sure what it's going to show up when I add you because it looks all white. Okay, there we go. It's like, shoot, I want to bring you up and then it... Okay, here we go. All right. Guys. No, you're all right. And I just, I figured we were, I figured we were wrapping it up anyways. I just wanted to thank you for having me on. And the only last oh. thought I would say, the only last thought I would have is how disgusting it has been for me and I'm sure my people that um she tried all of the stereotypical racial profiling Eguados and the Hispanic and the Quincy Browns mm -hmm. um playing on on those stereotypes of minorities when she's a minority herself and she yep. knows that because that's why she was looking up Spanish names for her very Spanish looking self <laughs> yeah so <laughs> you know just putting things off on people that that when we're done like that already, it's just, it's crazy. Um, yeah. Absolutely. But it was very disheartening um, <clears throat> that somebody from one of the minority communities that we're from, that she would target other minorities. Um, yeah, just perpetuate of all, that. Of, of all of the other distasteful, vile things she's done, she mm -hmm. just keeps, you know, she piles it higher and higher. Um, yep. But it's been very, um, very heavy. Like I said, we come from such a, a a very hard place already, and then you just put a spot, spotlight on us for the world to perpetuate that same stereotype. And, yeah. and I'm I'm sad for for Gannon, number one, and his family, but also for her that that she just continues to to perpetrate that cycle, and it was very disheartening because she had all the opportunities in the world to choose another direction. 
Mm-hmm. And, and she took that opportunity from Gannon, and it and it's is very sad case. And I'm praying during the verdict watch. I'm praying that she receives guilty, um, not insane, because she's so manipulative with her BPD that she could very easily, within 10 years, manipulate the staff, the psych team, to let her go. Yeah. And, and that's my biggest fear, mm. is, is that she'll be committed, and then she'll use all of her manipulative BPD pa- tactics to try to convince those psychiatrists that she's stable. When she never will be stable, she mm-hmm. never has been stable. Mm-hmm. Um, and I hope she receives the mental health while she's in prison. But one thing I do predict, I've, I think I've seen a few other channels predict this. If you think that we're going to get any kind of guilty verdict and we're just going to all go about our lives, you're never going to hear from Tisha again. Oh, no. She's going to um, reoffend incarcerated wherever mm-hmm. she's at she will continue to reoffend and we will have other cases involving her at least we'll hear about it from the you know from the yeah. from the prisons but mm-hmm. she will reoffend in custody you, yeah you, I bet you, you I agree that. yeah I think you're right on that for sure she yeah. attacked that oh, that guard or, and all when I'm glad you brought that up because we kind of it wasn't funny at all but when I saw the footage in trial, I laughed and laughed because during our riots that I shared about while we were in high school, that was our weapon of choice during the riot. They would actually hit you with a whole full can of soda and they would beat you with it. That was one of the weapons of choice. So when she hit the, the officer with the can, I said, how she's even using the old high school? Oh, game? my like, God. Like she learned that from high school. That wow. must be so weird to see that. that. That's a weapon. That was a weapon of choice during riots at our high school. I was hit with a whole can of Mountain Dew that was unopened. And when it hit my face, it exploded. And I can't tell you how much pressure and how hard that oh. was. Um, oh, yeah. So yeah, it did hurt. And of course I defended myself. I was able to see who threw through it. But as soon as I saw that she hit that officer with that can of monster, I said, she got that straight from here. That's so crazy. <laughs> like, like she got that, like, and that's so far, but cause to be honest, I haven't thought about hitting anybody with a can of soda since high school. Yep. Like it's yes. never crossed my mind, but she's still stuck in that, you yeah. know, time, in that mentality of, of that age. She's very, yeah, she acts right. like she's still 16 to me. Um, now I'm sure she didn't have a lot of weapons of choice in the car, right. but she still could have used her hand. I mean, who, who thinks of getting a can of yeah. soda? That um, is funny though. Yeah. You're right about her being still in that same like she hasn't changed. You were saying how she hasn't yeah, changed at she all. Hasn't. She really she hasn't. stuck at that age or something. Yeah, to Part me she has. I don't. I don't. I don't see any progression from her. And when she hit her with a monster, I said, "Wow!" Like, I. I mean, I laughed because, like I said, that was a weapon of choice in high school. Yeah. But then I, I thought I laughed again. Like I haven't thought of hitting nobody with any canned drink in a long time. <laughs> wow. um, but obviously that was her go-to. She was. I mean, she. And you see, as soon as she hit her, she started saying, she's attacking me. She was just lying as soon as she hit her. It's yeah. like, she won't stop. She won't stop. She's attacking me. She was yeah. treating me so bad the way she, she sounded like a little kid, like complaining. Mm-hmm. Like she wasn't nice to me. She wasn't being nice to me. That's right. And, and I had, I had a family member and I told Tisha that that's who she reminded me of one of my family members that um, for the people that are around them, they act innocent and very um, docile very humble but they would like sneak around and do all this stuff and then when I when they done something to me and I would defend myself I would be the one getting in trouble because they are pretending to be so innocent yeah and and that's how Tisha was and that's why I kept my distance with her I was never alone with her like I always had somebody with me because I knew that she was the type that could lie on me and they would believe her yeah, that's yeah. scary. Yeah. So I was yeah. like, yeah, I'm never going to be alone with you ever because they know tell them what you might lie and say I did. Yeah. Oh, you know, so yes, that innocent role. She's real good at that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And I and so when I saw the case, like you asked me, was I surprised? And I said I wasn't. And I wasn't because I knew that as with all of us, when you're a bad person, even if you're good at covering it up, 
even if you're good at pretending to be innocent, it will catch up with you and you will be exposed. I mm-hmm. mean, I, I firmly believe that for everybody. You might not be exposed on a national level the way she's been, but even in you know your personal lives, if you continue to be that kind of person, it's going to catch up with you. It's going to yeah, run definitely. you down. It's going to run you down. And so guess what? All these years of lying, of manipulating, of acting innocent when she was really the culprit, it's all exposed now. Every bit of it from... Mm-hmm. From high school all the way to the end. And then it'll just continue. Like I said, she'll continue to reoffend in prison. But she's exposed. She's never going to be able to hide behind her soft voice and her instant facade. Yeah. Ever, ever again. And and that's a good thing. That's a great thing because, and, and I also want to say, <clears throat> it, I told you our area is very criminal. Um, we have a whole lot. I couldn't even, there, nobody can put a number on them how many unsolved homicides and how many missing people we have. And I want to know everybody that knows her from the area, somebody needs to be checking into her and making sure she don't have any kind of ties to any of our local unsolved murders or missing people. Yep. I firmly believe, I firmly believe this is not her first murder. I just believe that in my heart. I don't have any kind of rumors to say that other than what I heard Harley say in court that her mom was worried about a hit and run. Yeah. Um, Other than that, that, I just firmly believe she's real. She's committed homicide before. And I would hope that anybody that knows her from back home or any of our law enforcement locally, like I want to know, Is anybody anywhere in law enforcement, FBI, anybody making sure she don't have any ties to all of our long list of unsolved murders and missing people? Yeah, because I feel like it could be a strong possibility. She has a tie to one of our unsolved murders or missing people. Yeah. I agree I with that. Surprised. Actually. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised the way she is. Uh-uh. I don't. I wouldn't be surprised one bit. And um, I, I read one of her letters that I think it was on your channel where she wrote the YouTuber and she was talking about how one of her personalities was raped or something by Travis. Yeah, yeah. And so I was going to I'm going to try to ask a few of my, our mutual friends and see if I can see if there's any Travis's and I have my yearbooks. I have yet to put my hand on them because they're pro- they're in a box somewhere. You know how your books are. Yeah. So I do have my yearbooks in storage somewhere. Whenever I put my hand on it, um, I'm going to look through it, but I'm going to try to see if I can come up with a Travis in our, in our local area that maybe, cause I was like, I wonder if that really happened because mm. there aren't too many Travis. Travis is not a very common name in our area. So I might know five. So it's not a very common name. So I'm going to ask. I'm, when I saw that video, I said, I'm going to ask about that. Because for her to have a, a, and this was a rumor, like I said, she never told me this personally. And I never had any evidence. But I was under the assumption then that she um, recreationally, when she partied, she took pills. Mm-hmm. And I knew that she liked the bad boy kind of thing. Um, at least at that time she did and in our area if she was dating a drug dealer or if she was dating someone that was abusing drugs she very those kind of girls in this area they really are victimized I mean that's just kind of anywhere really but if you're in that kind of environment and you're dating that kind of person there's gonna be a lot of criminal activity going on and she very likely was ain't no telling you know, but I was reading that and I was like, Travis, because it said she was, could you, do you remember exactly what it said with that person? Yeah, hold Travis? on one second. Let me get it. I think I've seen that today. I was, it just piqued my curiosity to try to see if I could validate that in any kind of way. And I know that her narcissism, I know she's going to write me back whenever I write her. I don't know if she would remember me. But I'm something tells me she would. <laughs> I bet. I think she does remember you from what you're saying because you're probably the only one that, you know, gave her. My, my mom said, it's a wonder she didn't try to kill you. I said she probably yeah. wanted to. But that's why I took my knife to school. <laughs> yeah, and I never I, I never that. used the bathroom. Like, and not just because of her. I never used the restroom in between class periods ever. 
because that was the busiest the bathroom was. It was way too many people in there and it was just dangerous to me. So I yeah. always used the restroom during class so that the restroom would be empty because people like her was going to be in the restroom. Yeah. And I wasn't going in there. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't either. So I have the letter. It says that she was abused by Travis and kidnapped by him and beaten ahead. She was cheated on constantly by her spouse and used physically and sexually. So it looks like she's saying Travis kidnapped her. And I'm going to, and when I share this with people, like if they're not from this area, they're usually surprised, but I've been kidnapped at least three times and I don't even live that kind of a bad lifestyle. Even when I was younger, I didn't. But yeah. when I read that, I was like, yes, yeah, she probably was kidnapped. I've been kidnapped. So I know she probably was. That's, That's a common thing. Yeah. That's a common thing that happens. And and it's not that it would have been a stranger. It's one of those things where, you know, you and your boyfriend get in an argument, you want to go home and he's just going to make you go somewhere and keep you for three days, uh, but it's still kidnapping. Yeah. yeah it's still kidnapping. Absolutely. You know? So that's something that could I've be another one that is, you know, there's at least a seed of truth to it or something. Yeah. And that's kind of, when I read that, that's kind of what hit me in my gut. I said, there's something in there here that's true and something that ain't, but I'm going to see yep. since she used the name Travis. Um, and can you imagine the, my little heart was doing flutters when she was doing, when I was watching the, the videos of her interviews um, mm -hmm. with the psychiatrist, because she started naming all these names and I kept praying and I said I was crying one day I said Lord please don't let this girl use my name in her interviews oh whatever God. like what if she uses my name my name as one of her personalities yeah. I'll die oh I'll God. just die I'll wow. die I'll never get over it God I already got PTSD please don't let her use my name Lord yeah please don't knows. let her use I can her kind of see her doing something like that well here's the thing she one of the names she used is very close to my name and I said, God, I said, I wonder if she was trying to remember my name, but my name's so eccentric. It's hard to remember if you haven't heard it in a while. Mm -hmm. And maybe she get, because I'll tell you the name that she uses close, which I think Zave knows my, my real name. But she, the name she used was Angel. And so when she said Angel, I got really scared. I was like, oh, my God, that's close. And then I was like, well, she didn't say my name. I'm not Angel. It's close. Angel's close to my name, but it's not my name. That's and so then I was creepy. And then I was like, I wonder if she was using angel. Because remember, if you remember, she said the angel looks like her. And my picture, I don't, it's not showing now. But my pictures on my icon, like when I chat and I think maybe when I emailed, I'm not sure. But unfortunately, you know, we're from the same tribe. So if you saw me and Tisha, you would think that we look similar. We have the same, well, I have a more brown skin complexion than she does. But we have a similar skin tone. We have similar hair. You know, we're from the same ethnic DNA group, so we do mm -hmm. look familiar. We do look similar. I look better than her, though. I'll just say that. <laughs> <laughs> I look much better than her, and I'm not a weirdo, so we're we're go I'm way ahead of the game. But when she was saying in the interview that this girl named Angel and she looks like me, and I kept wow. saying, "Oh my God, what if she's trying to remember my name and can't?" Because Angel's close. Would you agree, Dave? That Angel's close to my name. Like yeah, you, yeah. And I was like, oh God, what is she? That, yeah. I was just thankful she didn't remember my name. If she did try to remember it, and I'm just thankful she didn't use my name as one of her personalities. That's all. That would have been so and creepy. The only other name, the Taylor name, she was using Taylor when I knew it. I heard her be called Taylor before. But it was one of those things where I said, I thought you're, because I think her little, middle name is Leanne or something. Leanne. Okay. I was going to ask Leanne. you, what did she say her middle name was? Leanne. Le okay. Le Leticia Leanne. She didn't like her middle name either, but she said that Taylor somewhere, whenever she wanted me to call her Taylor, or I heard her being called Taylor. I said, that ain't even your middle name. She's like, I know. I just like it. I said, well, I'm not calling you Taylor. <laughs> no, not you haven't heard that wow. no so yeah she the only name i heard her use other than her name i would say would be taylor okay. um the, all the other names were brand new to me and i thank god that she didn't use my name because i probably would have fell out yeah i would have fell out the angel oh was close gosh. enough i was sweating i was oh, sweating wow. when she was talking about angel and then she was like she looks like me and i was like oh my god <laughs> i had to cut it off because yeah. i was 
I was full time triggered because if because I have such a unique name. Had she remembered it and used it in her interview, I would never, yeah. I'd have never lived it down. The whole community would have been calling me. We heard your name in the trial. Oh my god! <laughs> I'd have been like, oh my god! Oh, wow. <laughs> so thank God. <laughs> so like like you said, she very likely does remember me, and I am going to write her. And of course, I'll share. I'll tell her too. I don't care because I plan whatever correspondence I have with her. I plan on sharing with the public. Because mm -hmm. she needs all, like, a t whatever our most brilliant psychiatrists are in the country, and it obviously isn't Dr. Lewis, but whatever <laughs> oh our most brilliant psych team in the world needs to come quick and make her a case study during her whole incarceration. Like, yeah. she needs to be studied in every kind of way she can be studied. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she well. really does. Because as far as a research standpoint, there's a lot to learn from that person thing. Yeah, and I agree. I mean, I don't know because I've lived all this. I've never met anyone like her ever. I've met a lot of people with mental health. I've met all kind of people, but I've never met one just like her or anywhere near like her. So I do agree with Dr. Lewis. She's a very complex case and somebody yeah. needs to go document so, yeah all of that study her draw blood something because <laughs> i mean i think she could be useful to the department of defense that's just my opinion i yeah. mean i don't know some, some, some there's something. information to be gathered from her yeah for yeah sure. there there really is i just don't know what so to that say we can about learn about this stuff and you know be able to spot things earlier and mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and 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 maybe maybe for newborns that are born with some kind of genetic disorder or addiction problem, something, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, I mean, I, I, I think she fully needs to be studied in every way possible to study somebody, but yeah. I don't want to see her in the psych unit or in the, I don't want to see her committed to even have the possibility to manipulate her way out. Yep. That's, that's what I don't want. Um, yeah. I would much rather see her in prison. And if she does get in prison, she's going to want to be in general population. I would hope they would never let her in general pop, but I'm sure she'll try to beg her way in general pop because all she's going to get do is get in there, click up with some girls and try to manipulate and cause as much drama and crime as possible in the prison. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I hope she's segregated. She needs to be segregated wherever she's at for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But as far as my channel goes, like I said, I appreciate y'all having me up here. Of um, course. I really, I hope we have a verdict Monday. I'll be watching for sure. Um, and I do have other cases. Um, our area, our, the the big headline case for our area are, are the Lumberton murders. Uh, the, the girls that were, we have four girls murdered in Lumberton and they're still unsolved. Um, okay. So wow. that was that was headline news and the FBI is involved in those cases. And so the FBI and I'm glad I brought that up because that's one more thing I would like to share. Mm -hmm. um, the whole situation with her case. It anger. Another thing that angers me about it is <clears throat> like with her throwing off all these stereotypes for the for the other perpetrators that were non-existent. We have a case here locally that an 18 year old girl, if I ain't mistaken, what is her name? What is the girl's name? And I just looked the case up the other night. I'm not very good with names. Anyways, we have a local case that also has national attention. And she was an 18 year old girl. She had moved here from Texas, I think. Her, her mother was in Texas, her dad was from here. So when she got 18, she wanted to move out here with her dad and start a life here, I guess. So she was living with her dad here. Her dad was a deputy for the county. Her stepmom was a deputy for the county. The girl went to work at Walmart at six o'clock in the morning that morning, and they found her van. She never showed up for work. She's been missing ever since. Uh -huh. both, of, both of her parents, like I said, were deputies. Um, what was interesting about it is once the FBI become involved, um, they did let us know, let the public know that the stepmother was considered a person of interest. The county sheriff's department fired the stepmom. To my knowledge, the dad and the stepmom are still a married couple. 
And yet that girl's case has not received any kind of help or solution when it's the same situation as Tisha's case, because it's, it's assumed, presumed that the stepmother had something to do with that daughter's disappearance and likely homicide. And mm. we have yet to have any answers on that case. And I'm like, you know, um, this case got so much national attention. I'm glad it was solved. Thank God they found his body because who knows what the outcome would have been if they hadn't. Yeah. But um, there are other cases just like that one in our local area. Yeah. And I'm like, you know. Um, we got to look into that. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and the, F- the FBI still is involved in that case. Um, but with both parents being in law enforcement, obviously they'd have be privy to more information on how to hide evidence um, yeah but to be honest with you um like i like i shared there's organized crime here there's corruption here there's things that i don't like for instance say if you're a citizen in this area and you have a tip you don't even know want to give the tip because you don't you already are have knowledge that there's corruption in those departments yeah. And what if and what if your information is shared and then your life's in danger? Yeah. 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 You get what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. so the only way you could safely even give information would be anonymously from a P.O. Mm-hmm. box or something. Yeah. You know, and even then it's just scary. You just don't know the right moves to make. Yeah. But but you have to make the right moves for you because your life could depend on it. I know. It's so shitty. Yeah, so she's from an area where, like I said, she could have committed crimes and gotten off of them very easily because of the because the area is so saturated. But she needs to be in not only studied. I, I really hope that the people that know her in our local law enforcement or maybe even the FBI, if the FBI is listening, look into your other cases from our area yeah. and just and just make sure she doesn't have a tie to these people. I might have to do that. Yeah, that's a good idea because she might. Wow. You know, I mean, no. it's possible. I just, I just feel like it's there's, there's other crimes. There has to be other crimes that she's involved in or has been involved in yeah. that she wasn't that she got away with. There's just because she thought she was going to get away with it this time. Yeah. The only thing, the only thing that was very strange to me is why did she take the body to Florida. That's the only part that was the strangest thing for me because where we're from, um, we live in, we live near a Black River, a Black Water River, mm-hmm. which are very rare, and they call us the people of the Dark Water because our river is black. When you look in it, it's black. Um, we were raised swimming in that river, and then on either side of the river, all in our area. There's several, probably hundreds of swamps. We live in a swampy area. We, yeah. have, a black, we have a Blackwater River, and we have prob- just where I stay, there's like 10 swamps around me. So I'm that's sure. True. Why would you go to Florida then? Well, that's what I'm saying. I said, yeah. why? I, and I, I mean, don't mm-hmm. get me wrong. I'm glad she was that dumb to, to do that because yeah. I, the, the child need. I'm glad the child was found. He deserved a proper burial. His family deserved closure. And I'm so glad she did put him somewhere where he could he could easily be found. But most people from this area, if they were hiding a body, they're going to come home and hide the body in the swamp. Yeah. That's what everybody does would do that's what a criminal from our area would do um some some people it's been proven in our area some people feed the cadavers the deceased bodies to the hogs we're in a royal rural country area so that's that that has happened in cases too so to me if you had a body and you were hiding it why wouldn't you come home and put it in the swamp they would have never found a body in the swamp. And if they did, it would have been a long, long time because nobody fishes in the swamp. Nobody really goes in the swamp. Now, if it was in the river, people fish the river, they boat the river. So somebody will find you a body in the river. But the swamps are just outlets off the river. So nobody really goes in them. Right. Um, so mm-hmm. I was like, why wouldn't you bring the body to a swamp? Like, you're crazy. Yeah, like, like you went. Why would you drive it all the way to Florida and throw it off a bridge when you're from a very rural, swampy area? 
just it don't make no sense. But I'm glad I'm glad she didn't. Cause when when we were still looking for Gannon, I had all ideas that he was here. Like I said, he's here. Okay. He's got to be here. Aww. He's got to be here. Aww. But I wouldn't have known where to look. And we're the largest county in the state. So it's not like a small area to look. But when I first, when we were still looking, when he was still missing, and everybody was assuming he was passed at that point, I said, well, his body's got to be here. And then when his body wasn't here, I said, oh, yeah, I forgot. She's crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. She wouldn't do anything sensible. Right. You know, but I mean, the likelihood of somebody finding a body in the swamp is very low. Yeah. And so I was very surprised that she didn't even have enough of forethought, which I guess in her brain, in her delusional brain, she tries to act like she's from Myrtle Beach. You know, she got grown and moved to Myrtle Beach and tried to live her best delusional life. Yeah. Um <laughs> And and it and it's very it's very clear to most women what happened. She only has one child. That child's almost out the house. She's a free woman. She don't want to take care of small kids. Well, that's fine. You divorce them. You let their parents know. Yeah, look, this ain't working out. I'm not keeping your kids anymore. Starting Friday, give them a date, or you know, let them have some kind of time to prepare. Yeah. And then you go. You and Harley go on down the road. It's as simple as that. Yeah. I There's mean, that's years. that's all. If she wanted to go be a flight mm-hmm. attendant, if she wanted to leave the marriage, if her her daughter was almost grown, she didn't have to raise any more children. All she had to do was call the parents and let them know. Like, I'm tired of being your babysitter. I'm tired of raising y'all's kids. Y'all need to come get them. And I'm gone. And it would have been just that easy. Like, and, the, and then the, I think about it. She committed this crime at the beginning of COVID. The poor child would have never lasted with her through COVID. I had to stay home with my kids, what, two years almost, a year and a half. They had no class. And she was a teacher. So not only was the kids going to be home from COVID, her teaching was going to be home too. Mm -hmm. So she didn't even realize that just a few more weeks past that crime, their whole life, uh, everyday routines would have changed anyway. Yeah, you know they would have all been home full time, um, yeah. and and even more triggering, if I'm not mistaken, the the trial, the prosecution, they agreed that she committed the crime on the 27th. Am I correct? The 27th. Mm-hmm. Yes. Lena's Lena's birthday is the 22nd, which was earlier that week, and then my birthday is in between the 22nd and the 27th. So she actually committed the crime the week of my birthday. So I was sitting at home like, oh, yeah, great, bitch. Uh, commit a crazy crime the week of my birthday. Yeah. Right. But one it. thing, yeah, one thing I'm going to share with her when I when I do reach out in correspondence with her is, though, that in the, in the irony of it, she really helped me. She helped me back then and she helped me now. Back then, she showed me exactly what I didn't want to be. She showed me, I saw, like, there were some things of myself I saw in her, but those were the things I wanted to fix. Those were the things I didn't want to be. Um, And those were, and so being around her kind of was like a mirror to me. Like, oh, okay, well, that's how I look when I act like that. Yeah, I don't want to do that anymore. (laughs) Um, So I would write it in my journal. So, you know, meeting her back then just solidified and motivated me more to continue in a positive direction. Number two, when she created the crime, I was in a marriage um, with children and I also had a stepson. My stepson did not live full time with us, but I had a whole lot of engagement with my stepson and he really was with us throughout the holidays, throughout the summers, and and he was around a lot. Um, And I love my stepson, but my marriage was having problems. And so when the crime occurred, I said, oh, yeah, my marriage already has some problems, and I think I'm going to go ahead and exit right now. This is a wow. great time for me, and, and I didn't know that, and I'm still not divorced. I've actually, I have been separated since this crime, and a whole lot of it had to do with this case, because I was like, yeah, I'm not too happy in my marriage either, Tisha, so I think I'm going to take a little separation. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take like a look. It was a bit of a reminder. Like, yeah, it was. In high school, she showed you, like, what you don't it want was. to do. Yeah. And, and so even though we're nowhere around each other, her crime and the way she crashed out of her marriage helped me look at my own situation and say, yeah, this, yeah, I, I don't need to, I don't need to stay until something bad happens. Right. Now, my bad happened wouldn't have been like her bad happened, but I don't right. want anything bad to happen. You don't want anything to do with any, anything, anything bad. Like her, yeah. Yeah. So I was like, so I told my husband, I was like, look, my classmate done killed a child. She was crazy as hell in school. And now I'm in a marriage too. And I ain't particularly happy. I'm very stressed in my marriage too. And so, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to separate and I'm going to have some peace and quiet and healing time. And so people ask me all the time, you know, I am attractive. And so people ask me like, why are you still single? By choice. Because me and my children needed some peace and healing time. Good. And so, so she helped me back then. And then even now she helped me. Because, I, like I said, and I won't say because of the case or what she done is why I separated. Because, like I said, we already were having issues. But it just put a spotlight on me on the situation to be like, yep, you don't want to. Did she get cut off again? I mean, th this time it's just the audio. Last time it was the whole, the whole oh. thing. Oh. Is there an audio problem? Oh, yeah. There we oh, go. Yeah. You're back. I don't know what my phone done. It just did it itself. But um, but yeah, seeing seeing her, it really helped me put a spotlight on my own life and say that I needed some time from my marriage. And I'm glad I did it. Great decision I made. Um, and I, I don't regret. Like I said, I, I'm still not divorced. Um, but I made a great decision, and she helped me then, and she helped me now. She really did. Yeah. She really did it in the in the wrong ways, but right. Yeah, it, but, I know what you mean. but you know, I'm just the type of person. Bad things happen in all of our lives, and we just have to find a way to grow from it, learn from it, and make it a make it a pod, Take those bricks and make them stepping stools. I mean, that, that's just the only way I know how to to approach life because there's so many bad things in life. Those things can crash and drown you. They just they're very heavy on you if you let them. Mm -hmm. And and I had a stepson um the same age. My my stepson was eleven. Oh wow. At the same age Gannon was eleven. And and my stepson was going through those changes too, because you know that's between a child and going into teen preteen, I guess yep. you'd call it. So there was a lot of changes in it and it was, you know, a hard dynamic. I had to deal with the co parent and with the other parent and all of that and and very similar situation that family had issues and so I just looked at him I said you know what Tisha I'm not going anywhere near the path that you took like I'm gonna I'm gonna get out of my marriage in a healthy way mm -hmm. as healthy as I can for me and my kids yeah and, and if you had not known her that well in high school you probably wouldn't have had that fear that's strong enough where you could be reminded of her and yeah. say oh I gotta I gotta fix my shit yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it put a spotlight in it. And because like I said, I, I'll be honest and say I saw similarities in her and I in mm -hmm. high school, but I knew it was because of our tra our shared traumas. Right. I knew that. But I, I could not accept that that was going to make me into I just was not going to let it make me into anything bad or negative. If yeah. I, I just meant that it was going to be a positive thing for me. And it was because I've always used it um, in a positive way. And I just knew I didn't want to because the, the word word salad. Um, I learned that word in high school and mm -hmm. I saw myself doing that a lot. And I was like, you know, what? I'm really smart. So word salad, like if I'm talking like that and it's not coherent, it's not making us, a, you don't have a theme and supporting that, you know, we don't have a direction then that's, mm -hmm. not, that's not good. <laughs> that's not good. So when I would feel like that in high school, where I felt like I was getting into those word salads, I just learned to just stop talking and yeah. just, I'm going to be quiet today. <laughs> and I'm going to write in my journal today because I'm mm -hmm. not going to be walking around sounding like Tisha. <laughs> you know, I'm just not going to do it. But yeah. uh, I saw, I saw similarities. So like you said, it, it really, 
it took me back to knowing her then. And then I saw that our situations were similar now. And I said, oh, no, uh -uh, I'm not going right now. I said, I got a stepson, too. I love my stepson. But mm -hmm. he had special needs, too. And that he had some. I don't even see any evidence of Gannon having behavioral problems. That's just my yeah. opinion. I know they say that he was treated for ADHD and all medicine like that, but I just don't, you know, I don't know him personally, but I don't see a lot of evidence of that because right. my step, my stepson is ADHD and there was a lot of evidence of it. Anybody didn't know him like he wouldn't, because all I hear about Gannon is he was sweet. He was helpful. Exactly. Yeah. And, and you know, spoke out and stuff, you yeah. know, and my stepson, I can say those things about him too. He, my stepson was sweet and helpful, but he's also destructive, and all, you know, I can go on. Aww. He, you know, but at the end of the day, like one of the times I, he was he was here with me, um, his dad was at work, and there was let's just say a destruction of property on on the property. There was some windows broken, and just all kind of ugly things. And I went outside. I couldn't believe, you know, we got broken windows. I know that the stepson done it. So mm -hmm. it got to the point where me being a responsible parent, Tisha, where I had to tell his dad and his mom, OK, I don't have no problem with him being at the house, but I can't be responsible for him by myself anymore. Mm -hmm. So if dad's not home, then he can't come. Yeah. And, and, and of course, I was called a B for putting that rule down. But it was to protect myself because mm -hmm. I don't know his behavior had got so outlandish, you know, and, but I still didn't mistreat that child. I still didn't take it out on him. I said, you know what, buddy, this is the wrong thing. And actually, I talked to him like an adult. I said, listen, do you realize that I could call the police and I could make a report? Not that I, I did not do like Tisha and threaten to have him locked up and gaslight him and all that. I said, I could make a police report and I could force your mom and your dad to pay half of this property back mm -hmm. because if you were an adult, you would be expected to make this whole, you've busted this window. Now you have to pay for it. Right. And since you're a minor, then that means your mom and dad has to pay for it. So your mom would have to pay for half. And then me and your dad would have the other half because the property, the window that he burst was my neighbor's. And my neighbor is a family member, so thank God they didn't call the law. But if it had been a regular neighbor, they would have. Yeah, that would have been sure. like your stepson just bust our window. <laughs> like somebody's got to pay for this. Yeah. So I, I did make it a, a learning lesson for my stepson. Like mm -hmm. this is very serious. Somebody's got to pay for this. If it hadn't been my family, we would have had a, a whole ordeal here. And this ha this has been such a bad event that now I don't feel comfortable being responsible for you while your dad's not here. Right. And like I said, the family didn't like it. Oh, you're just being a B. You don't like my stepson. That's not true. I love my stepson, but, but it had got out of the realm of my control. Right. Yeah. And so you now did the right thing. Huh? I did the right thing. I knew when it was past my, ability to handle and she should have been a mature adult and know where her limit was too because I knew where my limit was but I didn't take that out on the child I took it out on their parents I said listen and when his mom would call she'd still try to put me on the spot and be like hey can you keep so can you keep the baby no his dad's working today I can I'm sorry mm -hmm. and like I said it, it caused problems but I knew I did the right thing because when you're responsible for someone's child, you're responsible for them. Like I said, if she was burnout, a caregiver burnout, if she was tired of playing stepmom, all she had to do was call them and say, I'm not doing it anymore. I cannot yeah, watch kids no anymore. For what she did, even, you know, that's mm -hmm. why, like you had said earlier, like her, her wires crossed, I think you said. Yeah, she's there. Because yeah, there's, there's no, there's no um, logical reason you could you could try as hard as you can to try to figure out oh she's in this situation so she did this and it, it's just right. not there there's no reason well, you're right to bring it to that point she's the reason she is the reason I coined a, a, a quote I guess you would say that I that has stuck with me for years is you can't make sense out of no sense or nonsense mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. just can't there's no there's you can't make sense out of no sense yeah <laughs> You can, like you said, you can try every which way you can, but it's just, it will not go together. Yeah. It's like That's why she needs to be together. studied, as you said. She really does. She yeah. really, 
really does. Like she said, she is she is right. She'll never have to work again in life. Mm -hmm. I don't know about being Hollywood rich, but I know Hollywood will probably make some kind of documentaries of her. They will probably. Oh, did she get kicked off again? It just bounced off. Yeah. Could be internet issues and stuff, but we need to wrap it up anyway. It's a two. Yeah. Nine. I'm good. Like, yeah, we should wrap it up. But wow. Okay. Um, I wanted to thank her. Well, if you're listening, thank you, Trigger. I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, well, what do you think we should do? Should I, we wait or just wrap it up now? Uh, we could wait like a couple minutes to see if she pops back on just to say goodbye. But she kind of did already. But again, her, uh, her channel is Triggered True Crime. That was our guest. Uh, she knew Letitia in high school. Yeah, we've been putting the links in the chat. So go check her channel out. Um, yeah, this has been good. This has actually been more insightful than I Im imagine. Wow, she yeah. had a lot of uh, stories and a lot of... Okay, here she is. Lose you again. <laughs> I did. I think that's my phone saying it's time for me to get off. I'm going to oh, stop God. running my mouth. Do <laughs> y'all yeah, yeah, have any last it. questions? No, well, you answered like every question I could possibly <laughs> yeah. have. You did great. <laughs> running my mouth. I heard that. Y'all said that I answered all the asterisks without asking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you did. That's great. Wow. Though. That's why I'm a good, I was a good defense attorney for Letitia. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. Well, thank you no, for coming on though. and sharing all that. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. It. Yeah, You're yeah, welcome. And, and like I said, I, I, I do plan on on doing some kind of further um videos about it on my channel um, yeah. and it'll probably be leaning more toward the religious i'm gonna just you know be mm -hmm. frank because i really do feel like you know there's there's some evil and some demonic things on there but but as with anything with the dcm if you get too off in religion then you're on the spectrum somewhere <laughs> <laughs> so you know there has to be a fine line there and i learned that too um but thank y'all for having me and thank um you. thank you for anybody that subscribes um um you have my email if you yeah. think of any other questions okay um i do have that mutual friend that played softball with her um i could give you her contact information i'm sure she would uh come up i know she's yeah, done some interviews be, with whips before Okay, um, yeah, I know Web Sluice. Yeah, that'd be great if yeah, her unless you want to wait till she contacts you or however you want to do it, that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, when I was on Web Sluice, uh, Web Sluice interviewed me three years ago when the crime just happened. Okay. Um, back then, which you'll see from my email since I'm backstage, uh, and on I was Street Watch, YouTube Street Watch was my original uh, channel name. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think Plunder used that interview and in maybe one of her videos and she called me Street Watch too. But now it's Trigger Truth Crime. And so Web Sluice does know me and my mutual friends because we we both have talked to Web Sluice before. Okay, okay cool. Well, thank you so much. Well, I'll thank be you. definitely talking to you in the future. So thank you for coming on. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. And um my prayers are with everybody, and I'm praying for a guilty verdict. <laughs> yep. Me too. Me too. All right. All right. Thank you. Trigger All right. Trigger. Thank Bye. you. Have a good Bye. Bye. All righty. Um. Wow. That was good. Um. So Web Sleuths, I'm gonna have to watch that interview. She said Web Sleuths had her on years ago. Wow. That'll be interesting. I'll definitely watch that. Um. I think like the biggest takeaway for me personally out of everything she said, and she said a lot of interesting things for me was just the fact that she heard about the crime and was not surprised about it. Like picture what yeah. that feels like, like you knew someone from high school yeah, and, you're and not, yeah. they were so, you know, horrible that here, you know, years later, what is it? 15 years later or something? you hear that they murdered their stepson and you're you know didn't find it surprising i think that just speaks volumes it really does about what type of, her yeah. character was like in in high school even 
Yeah. Oh, God. No, I know that is because most people like usually when something happens like that, they'll be like, oh, my God, I could never I couldn't believe it. You know, like people that went to high school with people that end up yep. being a murderer. Like, no, like what? I never would have seen it come. And you usually hear that. Like, so. For yeah. Her, even if like, the person oh, wasn't that great, it's like you're still surprised. Yeah. by. It. Oh, that just goes to show. Thanks, Tommy. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, she was awesome. I am. Definitely. Um, I feel like I learned a lot from her. Yeah. And the so, other thing that I also was like, oh, my God, about was right in the beginning when she was talking about how she just was like the only person in the class that didn't have like any empathy for that special needs girl. Yeah. Like, that's, that's a big thing when you, you know, you, someone could be a bully. Someone could be, you know. Dude, it's, I think she supposedly taught special needs at one point and she was a teacher for young kids. Can you imagine that? Yeah. Like, I was thinking about that the whole time. She freaking taught kids this evil, like, person. Wonder what her classes was like. Yeah, I can't imagine. Anyway, sorry I interrupted you, but I just wanted to add that. No. Like, that she actually taught special needs. It's just crazy. Wonder if she made fun of them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. And like she, they're kids, so she, I, they can't. Wow, I can't even imagine. Like there, there was probably a lot of, maybe probably not physical, but some sort of an abuse going on with her as a teacher to the kids. Oh, like sure. mental, I, like you know. What I don't I'm think saying? she had the ability to not do that. It sounds yeah. like, especially wow. it, she hasn't really changed much since high school. So. That was crazy. There are a lot of crazy stuff we learned. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, De definitely. All right, guys, I probably am going to end it, though, because I do think this is an important interview and I don't want to drag the, the live on too long um, with just us, <laughs> Juliet. Yeah. Yeah, no offense, but I know you no, understand. Good. Um, but thank you guys me. for coming out and being so awesome. You guys had some great questions. I'm sorry we didn't answer or she did answer them, but I'm sure we didn't specifically ask the ones that were started because she answered all of them, right? Yeah, we probably probably missed a couple, but I mean, we got a good amount of them in. So appreciate yeah, that, guys. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, have a good night, everybody. I might be alive tomorrow. I was thinking about it. I want to go through. Um, I was thinking about going through. I wanted to do it my last live and I forgot, but going through some of the affidavit, like some of the stories um, that Letitia told and some of the things that are in there that they didn't maybe stress in the trial that could be kind of interesting. Also mm -hmm. a little bit about like her education. I wanted to go over um, what else? I just don't, I want to make sure I don't forget when I do the live tomorrow, I always end up like not doing half this stuff I wanted to talk about. You should write it down. I did. Oh, you, you know are. what? I'm, I think I did get to put a list. Hold on. Let me make sure. I think I did a list yesterday. Hold on. Where did I put it? I don't know. I swear I had a list. I was all proud because I'm like, I had a list going on, but I don't know where I put it. That's my problem. I make notes and then I can't find them. Really? <laughs> where do you, where do you, you don't, do you move them? No, that's what makes no sense. They should be in here. I know I wrote it down with my pen. But I'm telling you, things are disappearing. Anyway, well, I'll find it. And <laughs> hold on. So. This, this is, is freaking me out because I know I just wrote it down like yesterday or the day before, and it's not in here. Dude, I know I know I'm not crazy. Oh, here it's it is. <laughs> no. Here it is. Whew. Oh my lord. Okay. I got it. So yeah, I might try to do, if I do one, I'm, I'm trying to get it, do one. I don't know what time I'll do one, but just look out for it tomorrow because tomorrow's Sunday. So lives are always really good on Sunday. I feel like, I don't know why, you know, I keep me, thinking I like today Sunday. is Sunday. I don't know why it feels like, no, it feels like a Sunday today. I kept thinking earlier it was Sunday too, for some reason. So maybe I don't even know what makes that, what like causes that to happen. But sometimes, you know, sometimes you like, you'll yeah. get corrected and then it's still later on. You'll still feel like the wrong day. Yeah. Like, what is that about? And how does a day feel like something? <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? It does. But like, how does it, you know, we yeah, connect that's like what I, it's funny because I was actually going to say that because that's so me. But I was like, let's start just open that can of worms right now. Yeah. All right, like, guys. Yeah, we can go on. Day? What are days? <laughs> yeah. And then it leads to another. <laughs> it's crazy. It's so weird. Oh. How we like connect like 
associate like oh uh, yeah yeah i'm not yeah let's not go down that route right now <laughs> that rabbit hole but um all right guys well thank you everybody thank Have a you good everyone night. good night good night bye and thank you all every real quick thank you all the super chats thank you guys i some of them i didn't get to actually vocally thank but i think i caught them all in a message at least but thank you guys all right